Welcome to Snowmobile Sessions Live on YouTube and your favorite podcast platforms. We're the number one destination to learn about snowmobiling, network with other sledders, and have an awesome time doing it. We'll meet other snowmobilers that share your passion and show your fan photos along the way. Snowmobile Sessions Live. Enjoy the ride. It's a journey. You guys know who this episode's brought to you by. It's by Energy Power Sports. They're Oakville's full-line BRP dealer with sales and service to all BRP models and so much more. Check out energypowersports.ca. Also check them out on the YouTube uh, at Energy Power Sports. Click that subscribe button. And if you're on the Instagram, give them a follow there as well. I'm going to change these slides up for next week. They're getting kind of stale. It's also brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. Uh, there's only one thing that uh, that a rubber track can't do, and that's uh, that's penetrate snow, hard snow, and ice. And that's where Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products come into play. And if you go on to uh, fasttrack.co, F-A-S-T-T-R-A-C, there's no K, dot C-O, and use the coupon code SNOW at checkout, you'll get a, a free toolkit for installing your studs at no extra cost. So that's fast track snowmobile traction products. There we go. Welcome back, guys. We're here at season three start, and I'm going to bring in the special co host for tonight, Jinxie Boy. How you go? How Hello, you doing, Corey? Everyone. I'm good. How are you guys? Or how are you? Good. I should good. say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we got lots of people in the chat, and and uh, I'm going to bring in the, 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 the real guests for tonight, and uh, we'll go from there. But uh, I want to introduce everybody to Paul Prudhomme from ski -Doo. How are you, Paul? Oh, good evening. Good. I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. Paul, uh, give us a little uh, rundown of uh, who you are and what you do at ski -Doo and uh, And we'll get into big details when we get into the photos because you sent quite a few that uh, are really worth okay. checking out. It's going to be a good show. Yeah. So, um, well, happy to be here. Um, so I was quite excited when Corey mentioned it the other day. I said, oh, this will be fun. Um, so I'm the product manager for the snowmobile group for accessories. Um, so with that, I basically oversee all of the accessories um, in development, uh, looking ahead for the future, uh, you know, thinking out of the box, new ideas, all of that good stuff. So I work with the engineering and design teams to make that happen. And uh, I handle the ski brand and links worldwide. Nice, nice. Well, that's cool. We got a lot of excited people in the in the house looking forward to you. I'm gonna read through a few of these. J J Fly Low is the first one in. He says hello, everyone. Tim V says, uh, "How's it going? Welcome to another season." Pro Polaris Rob, we won't hold that against him, will we, guys? <laughs> okay. He yeah, says right. <laughs> he said he says good evening, everyone. Corey Brock says, "What's going on, long time fellas?" Uh, Jacob Harney, he's good. He's good to be back. He says, "Woohoo!" And uh, Mark Slayton stoked for another season. So. A um, little bit of chit chat going back and forth, but Renegade X, he came in the house. He says, "Even evening, guys," and uh, it goes on and on. Anthony Palermo from Windsor's in the house. Sup, guys? Hope your summer was good. And uh, you know, snowstorm. He's a he says, "Good evening, fellow sledheads." Corey Brock kicks it off with a super chat. Kaching! I gotta get my sound effects going. It's it's uh, a little unprepared for tonight, but six ninety nine. He says, Cheer. "Let's get the party started." Thanks, Corey. On me, he says tonight. That's great. Appreciate the super chat. Uh, David Barker says, giddy up. Cranky Sleds is in the house. Keith, 6306, he says, hey, guys, Wisco Sledhead's in there. I'm not even going to get through this. Uncle Buck, he's another guy that we recognize. Skidoo, 600R. Oh, I, I'm going to be here all night reading names off. And my son, DP Rock, says, we're back. So I love that. <laughs> Welcome aboard, Drew. So, yeah. So, anyway, it's been... Uh, it's been a long time coming, and you'll see my uh, my co-host is uh, for tonight is is Corey Jinks, and uh, I, I'm going to fill you in on the new format for the show. And it kind of spawned off the last uh, the last episode we had, where uh, I didn't have a co-host, and I just invited everybody that had a link to to hop on screen with me, and we had a blast. And I went, you know what? Snowmobile sessions was always about building a community of riders, and you could see everybody in the in the chat is. Uh, there's a lot of friendships have been made through this show and uh, even myself through, through new people I've met through doing the podcast and 
And I want to open it up so that more people get faces of the name. So you don't have to be famous like Corey Jinks to, to be a <laughs> co-host. Well, let's not get carried <laughs> away here. You know, and that, that's the thing. We're going to get Wisco Sledheads. There's a guy we haven't seen on, on screen before. He's going to come on in a few weeks. And Tim, uh, he reached out to me after watching the Slow B show and uh, and heard the uh, the format we're doing. And he said he'd love to join us on screen one day. So it's uh, it's exciting times. And hey, if you bring a cool guest along like Corey did here, then you, you step right up to the front of the line. <laughs> I've always been cool by association. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, Corey, you you sent us some new pictures, and we'll get to them. But how have you been since the last episode, and what kind of, what have you been up to? I'm trying to think. What month was that, in Gary, when we had that? Well, that would have been end of February, early March, maybe maybe early March. Yeah. So I I was having a hard time remember remembering when we were on and what was left over because uh, I'm pretty sure I was getting into that uh, rap tour in a day. I don't know if we covered that or not. You did. Uh, I you, think we so. did a we did and and you had just ridden the 850 XRS Gen okay. five uh, okay you just so had gotten it. To... but Sorry, you didn't really a bit. <laughs> yeah uh, we will we will get into that but I mean it was the the whole wetness rain ride was was yeah. after the show it was like a, we we caught you in between that week so um we'll oh, we'll hear more right, about yes. that but yeah like. So you had, you had, I think you had ridden or were going to be riding it. And then, and then you and MJ went on a, on a rain date, you know, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So, yeah. So since that time, obviously busy with, uh, I mean, outside stuff, I've got a uh, country property, so that's keeping me busy all, all summer long. And I made an employment change too. So that's a uh, change of pace, um, on site more and, and a little bit longer days, but as, uh, uh, Colt, Colt's the Lynx ambassador. He, uh, as he says, working for the winter. So it's uh, working hard to free up more time in the winter, ultimately, which uh, I'm sure a lot of these guys do. I know a lot of these guys are in trades and, and it's really grinded out in the warm months and, and maybe take a little time off in the winter. Yeah, that's a nice thing about a lot of the trades like that too. So, and and Paul, you had said that you uh, you're you represent both Skidoo and Lynx uh, on the brand parts and accessories part of it what do you ride like do you have a do you have one of each or do you have a preference or what do you think <laughs> well I, links i just actually took links over this spring so uh, having links uh, is new for me from a product development point of view uh my typical sled that i ride every year is a renegade xrs 850 um so i've got a new um Gen 5 coming, and uh, I've also ordered the uh, the Lynx X Terrain for this year, too. Oh, sweet. Now, is the Lynx X Terrain, does it have the the LED pod headlights like the uh, the Shredder no. has? No, it doesn't. It's not in the sh uh, the Shredder body this year. I got you. The yeah. Shredder, by far, is the coolest looking machine on the snow. Yeah, it is pretty that, nasty that, looking. The, yeah, the, hot. the fairing around, oh yeah, like it's it looks like it's gonna put a curse on something. <laughs> like a, <laughs> yeah, like, a, a like a villain, sure. like a villain from a Marvel comic book, I think is is what it is, right? So but uh yeah, so I've I've got a Gen 5 XRS on order and I can't wait, especially after hearing all the reviews earlier in the year from Jinxie, and now we're seeing you know snow tracks TV is done you know reviews on it and it's uh it's getting noticed out there so and i and i noticed online there was a guy that actually took delivery of one so they're they're starting to be released by the look of it yeah they're they're shipping them right now but uh you're gonna enjoy it it's a it's a it's an awesome ride everything yeah, about i'm it. coming on yeah. yeah i'm coming off a 2022 uh renegade x with the 7.8 inch gauge and i uh i'm going with the smart shocks in the 10 and a quarter because that gauge is uh the gauge is what made the jump, and I couldn't get it in the blizzard. So you have you have to go up to the XRS or Smart Shocks, then, right? Yeah, no, the, you'll love the gauge. The gauge works awesome. Um, uh, you know, just the the well, first the size of the screen, but the your ability to manipulate through it, uh, all of the different functions that it has. Uh, there's the new control module uh, with the gauge too that is very intuitive as far as how you can pan through the different screens of the gauge. Um, and then the, the SAS for sure. I had that on my sled last year and 
and absolutely loved it and and obviously got to ride it through the evolution uh when the guys were working on it to see what they started with to what they came out with it's it's uh it's been a lot of fun that project yeah i i was blown away like i i i like a lot of people they think it's kind of a gimmick when it first comes out right and, and it wasn't until uh my friend Corey got that he started with no no chip right and then they put the chip in it and it was night and day difference but also too the the rideability of smart shocks is just insane it's such a game changer and then i rode with a couple other guys that had it and again i'm going on quick adjust and uh we were watching each other sled and what the suspension was doing over different sections in the trail and there was no body roll no movement at all in the in the sled itself and the skid was going nuts but i was bouncing everywhere you know so mm -hmm. I, I i'm really looking forward to that being an old guy with frail bones you know <laughs> It really helps <laughs> out on uh, yep. the rider fatigue. Uh, like when I did that that 700k ride in a day, I, part of my joke was I was like, "Well, I should just keep going because it felt like I could." It it was really incredible. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. You were on Smart Shocks when you did that. Yeah, because it was last year's sled. Right on. Yeah. So yeah, all okay, the gear yeah, right and everything too, yeah. on it. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, we'll talk more about that when we get into it for sure. So. Um, J J J M ass J, J mass are 850 says he ordered the same 2023 XRS renegade with smart shocks 10 and a quarter and a one and a half ice ripper. Yep. A renegade X 850 on order for Wisco sledhead wife. We got a picture of that coming up. Um, yeah. So we, uh, we'll get into those, uh, those fan photos shortly and, and away we go. So well, actually, let's do that because, I mean, we're going to talk about products and development. We're going to get off on some real tangents. So do you guys want to start the fan photos now? Sure. You're the boss. Okay, let's do it. I'm co-boss, so let's do it. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, here we go. Fan photos are brought to you by Fast Track Snowmobile Traction Products. <laughs> Check out fasttrack.co. And the computer went to sleep, so we're losing it here. <laughs> Hold on here. We'll get it there. There we go. Where'd you guys go? Hold on. There we go. This is what I want. It's not even your own sign-in name, Gary. No, I'm using the wife's computer. Having uh, <laughs> I, and we all have technical difficulties, eh? There we go. Uh, yeah, we'll get through this. Yet I had it all queued up. It would just. It was. It, I'll blame it on Corey's. Uh, Corey's delay in starting that put my computer to sleep. So, here we go. But uh, this is what's. This is what the my favorite part about uh, snowmobile sessions is all about. Paul is a is a fan photo. So just to start out, this one here is from Corey Brock, and I I actually bugged him to send me this. Um, he's too humble, but. Uh, Corey, uh, he says, here's a pick of the recent award or family won at the District 4 Volunteer Family of the Year for, to, for the Ontario Federation of Snowmobile Clubs. And that's a nice award there in the corner. He says yeah. last season was our, it was only his second year with the club, the Hillsburg Snow Roamers. And he says it's super important that everybody get out to help and keep our amazing trail system what it is today. Even if it's for a couple hours, every bit helps. Happy new season of, is among us, and he can't wait to start making some new videos with lots of laughs. Cheers, pal, he says. But uh, he, he's modest in this because I've seen pictures on, on his social media channel, and, and uh, Corey, Corey's family does pitch in at the club events. They're out there selling hot dogs and T-shirts for the club to raise money, and uh, Dallas's son is out there helping at the trail, staking and, and clean up and everything. So... I can't think of a more deserving family of the to to get this award. And that is awesome. I think Corey shows a good example that it, it doesn't have to be a chore. You could get your family out there and make a make make some fun of it, you know, get the side by side out or what have you and and uh, lend a hand. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's uh, we need more families like that. Yeah, and that's the thing is is they they all love it and Shannon's the first year rider and 
got into snowmobiling last year and I was, I was lucky to go on a couple of trips with them, a couple of rides with them. And, uh, and she's doing really well with it. And I think the, I think the son's just going to follow suit. Hopefully he drives a little slower than his dad though. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> and this is from Wisco Sledheads, And he says, it's good to be back and in the podcast again. He's gearing up for another winter with uh, lots of new stuff happened this summer. He dabbled into the vintage sled game with a 72 Arctic Cat Panther 340. He built a 40 by 80 garage at the cottage, of course, to add to his obsession with sledding. And he's uh, he's had late nights in the garage studying sleds and downing bush lights. And patiently oh, waiting for the yeah, waiting for the wife's 23 Renegade X850 to arrive. Uh, he said life's good and he's ready to brap. Would love to be on a podcast one of these weeks, Wisco Sledheads. And he's gonna he's gonna co-host with me one night. But there's his uh, his indie there and his his little panther and some studs um right there that he's thrown in. Nice looking job. And there's a shop, beautiful little shop. Nice. I don't think he's got much water on the floor in that, does he, Corey? I can guarantee you it's less than I do. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I remember those photos. And this is this is the same thing I got, only with uh, with the smart shocks and the. Oh no, that's just an X. I got the XRS. So this is my sled from last year in the Gen Five, which is a great machine. You're gonna love that. But man, the black uh, it looks amazing here. But the pictures is. This guy was posting this week the, of the one that arrived. I just can't stop looking at them. They're just amazing. Amazing, amazing. Do you get involved in the design process of those as well, Paul? Um, not so much on the vehicle. Um, you know, I get the opportunity to comment on uh, different features. You know, I'm part of the, uh, I'm part of the committee that evaluates uh, uh, and, and recommends. So, um, I, I, I'm not afraid to speak up when it comes to some of the design elements, but it's not, uh, it's not my main responsibility. Yeah. What, what do you think is your favorite part of the gen five? Like, what do you think is the, is a standout for you? Um, well, it's a couple things. It's, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the gauge number one, finally, we've got a, a really nice gauge on the, on the sled, uh, the ergonomics, um, as far as uh, wind protection that it provides, um, you know, I really like that. Uh, there's with the extra motor mount. Uh, there's a lot. The harmonics are better, so less vibration. Um, so overall, it's just a just a really nice uh, package. And then of course, uh, you can't forget the headlights. So huge improvement uh, with the uh, with the stock headlights on it. Well, yeah, for sure, Corey. Nice Corey there. said he, yeah, and and Corey said that he. Uh, he noticed right away that the, uh, the, the less vibration in the feet. Yeah, no, the feet handlebars, you know, you'll still get at idle. You'll still see the, the handlebars vibrate a little bit, but, uh, once you up the throttle, it, it goes right away. But, uh, yeah, overall vibration is, is, uh, oh, we better, lost them. <laughs> better, uh, yep. better clutch alignment, you know, all of the benefits you get with that. So works really well. And you had a comment there, Corey, you, you wanted to comment on it. Oh yeah. Back. Uh, Cause I, I spent a little bit of time in the dusk and dark uh, on the gen five and the new headlights are, you know, I don't think people are ready for how dramatic it is. Uh, they're, they're substantially better. Like no question. People are going to first night ride, go, Holy crap. I could see what I'm doing. Nice. Like, it's pretty stellar. Mm -hmm. Nice. Well, yeah. you know what? If you look at, go ahead, Paul. No, I was just going to say, no, the stock headlights are, are amazing. And what's extra cool with it is when you put our accessory lights on it, it's, it's really like you turn the sun back on. It's an, it's really incredible as far as how much light that we're able to uh, project from that sled. Nice. Well, that's the thing. I, that's one thing I'm really keen on. Cause I actually market uh, a halogen or sorry, led lights, halogen upgrade kits, uh, replacement kits, uh, LED kits for the Skidoo's, and and uh, that's one thing I'm really keen on seeing is is how much better they are, you know, and uh, and they look amazing. And you look at the pods that they are, and a, a lot of the vehicles are using similar LED pods, like the Cadillacs and the 
and uh, um, the Escalades and things like that. And they're super bright. So, I mean, and you've got four of them in this thing. So they, it's got to be dynamite. Yeah. And the, the pods that you're talking about for us, they are automotive quality pods. So it's the same, same concept from the automotive. Oh, that's great. That'll be, it'll be awesome. And then uh, Dominator, he says it's uh, been a long, hot summer here in Chicago. He got these picks from a ski dealer in Appleton, Wisconsin in the spring. Not sure what this thing is, but hot, it's cool as hell. But uh, it looks like a modified spider, you know. Have you seen one of these? I've seen them. I forget the name. I think it starts with an M. Uh, but I, ha I have seen them. It's got Vander Hall on the side. It's almost like a classic, old That's classic like car, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty wild. It's amazing what some people come up with, right? And then this is uh, this is from Blake P. He said, "Fan photo tonight from Shining Tree with a face full of snow. Love riding up there." He's rolling in deep, literally, eh? Yeah. <laughs> He's in for the long tour with the extra fuel on there too. Oh yeah, I like that stacking ca gas caddy. Is that something you got involved in, Paul? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the whole uh, yeah gas caddies, the whole link system, the attachment system on the back of the vehicle. Right on. What what uh, what spawned that? Uh, like how I did it come about? <laughs> what spawned it? I think I was out west riding, and we had a different attachment system back in 2013. Because I think link, well, 2012, I think it was, and we were out west uh, riding in the mountains and. I was following about seven sleds and I watched seven jerry cans fly off in front of me. And I was like this, and we had a net system and it was pretty complex. And it was like, well, this isn't any good. So we got to go back to the drawing board here. And, uh, and um, basically we, we came up with the, you know, the, the link system, a quick release system. And it came out on the, uh, the Gen 1 Outlander uh, first. And then the following year we introduced it on uh, ski -Doo. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that is probably the, the most, I think it's the most widest shared accessory across all manufacturers. You know, how many Polaris owners you see up the, add the link to their sleds or the Arctic cats and, and that type of thing. So you gotta be proud of that. It is, it is pretty, it is pretty cool, obviously to see the, see the other brands uh, and, the, and the consumers choosing our product, uh, and, and seeing them on the back of the sleds for sure. It's a, uh, it's, it's neat to see. Yeah. I made a little adapter kit for my, uh, Yamaha Wolverine 350 ATV so I can put my link uh, bag and link uh, gas can on it. Works really good. <laughs> yeah. No, with actually with that, with that, because so many people have been doing it, we actually came up with, uh, uh, universal mount kits now so it's a it's a hard plate and uh, basically there's two different versions of it but ultimately it allows you to uh, use the link accessories on anything you want to bolt it to so whether it's another brand of vehicle whether you wanted to uh, use it in your garage to get your link accessories off the floor and, and you know it's 16 inch center to center so you can screw it to the studs on your wall or in your trailer but a really neat way to to help organize uh, all of your link accessories and then there's a there's another version of it that uh, say we didn't offer a product say you're into photography uh, and you had a really expensive camera and you had the nice camera box well you could take it and and mount your camera box to this link plate and then be able to have the same functionality when you go out on the trail with your sled to to carry your your camera with a with you with a link setup Oh, that's cool. What a great idea. We had, we had one of those plates for, uh, for an auction item last year in our BRAP cancer, uh, charity auction online, but I don't know whether people realize how, how flexible that thing was as far as what you can use it for. I think we, uh, I think we need to do a contest or something. Uh, and I'd be even open to do it with you if you wanted, we could have a fun contest where we, uh, yeah. Uh, see yeah. how creative people could get with their uh, their link plates. Okay, oh, we'll cool. see something on, interesting, I'm sure. 
Yeah, just hold on. We lost me here. Hang on. I just got to swap out batteries. It won't take me long. <laughs> now who's the prepared one? On the... Yeah. yeah, exactly, right? But even to snowball yeah, off what Paul was saying, it's, it's super cool what that link does in terms of uh, opening doors and storage like the just you see it in trailers enclosed trailers all the time to get that stuff up and out of the way and on the side of the trailer i think that's super cool alone and to not have to have any additional uh gear or stuff to do that you just need the links and 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 brackets and and you know fire it up there i think that's really cool no, yeah, no, that's I, I, I think it's neat. Like, and we got a picture of that that plate that we're talking about. So, yeah, you let me know what you want to do with the contest. If you want to give one away tonight, we can do that. I've got a randomator we can do, and we can make Corey do some homework, counting numbers and and stuff. But uh, yeah, you let me know or if you want to have it a long term thing. We can uh, we can shout out to show us, send us in pictures of your link uh, accessories that you're using today, and some creative way to do it, and then we can get you back on to do a, a pick of the best one, or if we want to do a random draw on it. Yeah. Okay. I'll well, leave I'm, that up I'm to you. Paul. That. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's do that. That's awesome. We love, uh, we love prizes on here. That's for sure. So, yeah. I'm just seeing who slow bees in the house. He says, uh, he's got to fill the pockets. He's late from work. So he's, uh, he, that's his excuse. Needs the money. I was on slow bees kind of talking, talking smack with the boys he's got a little uh um it's kind of like a podcast but he pre-records it and and it's it, we had a lot of fun on there last week so if you go to slow b youtube check it out and uh you can see me sitting in his backyard with my dog uh, right by the fire it's a miracle of uh of special effects so this is from our friend uh, our friend uh, michael uh, sled 519 and he says this is my son grant and his new snowcross buddy Theo fist bumping after their first race of the season last year in Lindsay, Ontario. But check nice. out that wrap. Yeah, that that's awesome to see. Little kids getting involved and having a blast. Do you wrap your sleds, Paul, or you uh, do you like riding them naked? Not naked, uh, wrapped, naked, but I wrap one. I wrapped my 2018. That was the first one I did just because uh, I uh, I wanted to go through the process of trying it myself since, you know, a lot of customers do it. So I wanted to see uh, how hard it was. And uh, uh, but uh, and it wasn't too bad. Um, the, the, the graphics that we offer as far as the wrap kits uh, are uh, very thick and easy to apply. Or if you put it on the wrong spot, you can peel it back and reapply it. But uh, I'm I'm typically more of the plain Jane guy when it comes to uh to the sleds so I like a lot of the stock graphics and a lot of times what I'll do though is I'll I'll change it up I'll, I'll uh, you know go to a darker colored skidoo say if it was gray or I like switching the body panels around if it had black in one area I may add it to switch it out to yellow or something like that just so that my sled's a little bit uh a little bit different but uh I don't I don't usually do the uh, the full wrap setup for sure or red skis. Yeah, on yeah. Hey, yeah. Well, I had I had red skis last year, so people were laughing at me. But I thought it was. I I think I kind of made a statement. I knew it was me coming. So <laughs> exactly, that's right. And you know what? If if you if you go over the handlebars and you run yourself over, they won't know what the red skis are or what blood is. So you're you're good. It covers it up, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> that's why I paint. That's why I wrapped my hood red that last year. Yeah. <laughs> Corey, had, Corey had fun chasing the red skis, so I don't think he. Oh, freak! Oh, there we go. <laughs> I love it. Uh, back on that link, uh, that link uh, plate. Uh, Corey Brock said, "Is that product available now?" Yes, it is. It is okay. Excellent. I can, uh, as you're talking away, I could maybe even find the part number here somewhere. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah, we can. And it, it must be because we actually had an energy actually donated that part last year. I think it was brand new. Yeah. So coffee, yeah, water, beard is in the house. Anyway, Corey's we got that. We're going on to Corey uh, Jenks's picture now. 
And uh, this must have been your rap tour in a day trip, right? Do you, do you have yeah, some extra and, highlights of that? Yeah, and I, again, I kind of forgot when we had spoken and we uh, had our last episode. So I guess we'll overlap a little bit. We don't have to uh, dive into it too much. But what I can say is for the future is um, uh, I am going to – now I feel like I kind of have to do it every year. Uh, I did it alone to kind of – rule out a lot of things to to know what it would take um i think i think i would be willing to take one or two people with me this year so uh, i might have to draw straws so um yeah maybe and maybe we can do some sort of um you know fun thing where we can get some video going but un- but the part of it is is trying to do it in a timely manner too so that's what kind of is yeah. the tricky part because i really did try to from uh, my own marketing side of things and getting all out on my social media and make a video of it It ended up being really hard. And I pretty much gave up on it halfway through, but I made sure I got photos at certain stop signs and that sort of thing. But it was a cool experience. And I'm sure a lot of people listening uh, in that are in the province anyway, have done that tour. And uh, whether you do it in a day or two days or three, it's something you should definitely do. Uh, Stretch it out over three or four. If you've got a young family and you want to get them out and about, it's a, it's a fun ride. So, that I can say for people from for people watching in the United States uh, to, or even that maybe not have heard of it or done it. Just give us a rundown of what it is and what the the length of the loop is that you that you're doing here. So uh, in Ontario, there's a, a provincial park called Algonquin and uh, an acronym, you know, ride around the park. Um, so it's called the Rap Tour. So you go around the entire the entire park to do it officially, where you go to like the set hotels that are part of the rap tour on the maps and everything i think it stretches actually out to uh, like 780 kilometers i think but if you to streamline it like i did and and nip off some of the corners that you really don't need to go on um it was just just over 700 so you know planning fuel stops and food stops uh was all part of the battle and a fun part of it and again uh it's a trip you can do like I did and make it a little exhilarating and see what kind of ground you can cover. Uh, or it's a fun family outing uh, uh, and you stretch it over a few days. The hospitality is great in all the towns, uh, a lot of small towns that thrive from snowmobiling. Uh, so that uh, uh, is always a good time uh, stopping and picking up a beverage or two after the, after the ride at a hotel and enjoying some dinner. So it's fun to do it both ways. Let's put it that way. Yeah. And, and I can't remember what time did you start in the morning and what time did you finish at night? I was out in the garage at four 30 and on the sled by five, um, which you know what, even if I were to say anything about this, I suggest everyone to get up one day and leave that early, whether you're just going to go a hundred kilometers and back, you see some really cool stuff. You see animals you don't normally see. Uh, I saw wolves dragging a deer across the lake, a uh, bunch of, um, small game rabbits and things like that, that sure you see from the odd time, but was, uh, was, was really cool. And the sun rising on the lake was just really good timing on my part. So the lake, uh, lake views were really good. And you, as you know, this one's for Corey Brock, you can get a lot of places at 50 kilometers an hour. If you leave it early in the morning, <laughs> he says, definitely did the speed limit, right? Jinxie. He says, you bet. Uh, sled five, sled five, one nine says he's available. So I think this is going to be like a 15 person <laughs> group ride. <laughs> well, then, you know, what? it's going to turn into a two day ride. Cause uh, you know what happens, right? My firm, my firm line what... in the sand is you got to quit smoking because the second you stop, the guy is always the guy with the modular helmet and he lights up the smoke and there goes 15, 20 minutes every time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. I'll be, I'll be okay on that. That's for sure. So yeah. Dominator says, what, what the F is a Kayla ke- mater? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the it's conversion of miles anymore. One one point six kilometers is one mile. So okay. it's less than a mile. There you go. Full day sunrise rides, sunrise after dark, or, and to after dark are the best, Dan Brinley says. So that's cool. No, that's great. Yeah, let me know on that. I mean, we cottage up in that neck of the woods. So um, I don't know if a day is is a thing. I'd, I'd, I mean, I do. I'm up to anything, but uh, 
I can, well, I can handle like, the 52 kilometers an hour. If we have to break the speed limit, <laughs> you know, maybe 55, you know, on the lakes, right. Where you can see, um, oh yeah, for sure. You get the wind blowing behind there. you too. And sometimes it can push you over the speed limit on the trail too. Right. Yeah. Tailwind. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so you can see some of uh, Paul's fancy design uh, on that sled back there, but, um, that was my only food stop of the day. And it was, I planned to be there at lunchtime and I was knocking on their door at 10 to 11. Uh, cause it wasn't open yet. Cause I wanted oh, nice. something reasonable to eat. Cause two years ago, we were all so used to gas station food for lunch with uh, COVID and the way uh, our province handled all that wasn't very fun. So, you know, dried meats and cheese tend to be lunch uh, all winter long a couple of years ago. So to get a nice uh, sit down meal uh, in the middle of that ride was cool. And you know what? I, I had, I don't typically bring the fuel. I try not to be the fuel, the fuel camel if I don't have to be, but hauling that fuel and the little bit of gear I had, like the smart shocks and all that handle that extra weight without really adjusting, you know, overly thinking about it um, really well. Like you, we've got hydro lines in sections of Ontario where the trail just disappears and you're uh, in the air sometimes, uh, even if you're yeah. in the speed limit <laughs> and you know, the way the smart shocks react to that, they know you're in the air, they're going to adjust and it, it never bottom that sled out. You, I, that, just, that's awesome. it would take some extreme, extreme riding to ever be able to bottom that sled out. Did you do any setup other than just get on it and ride? Like, did you set torsion, the, the torsion springs or did you set the, like, is there adjustment like that on it? I can't remember. Yeah, I still, I turn the torsion spring, I think just one click just to adjust for a few extra pounds in the back. And I put fresh carbides on because uh, I didn't want to, you know, work more than I needed to in the corner. So fresh set yeah. did that early uh, or late the night before i didn't get up to the cottage till almost 11 30 so it was a short sleep and on the sled but it was all, it was awesome the whole experience was awesome even though i was by myself it was just one of those peaceful peaceful moments where i was just me in the snowmobile and and you know the terrain and i suggest anyone who's uh got the opportunity to maybe do something like that they should that's awesome um, actually you know Darryl what this made... all tails off paul not being able to come I went alone because that... Paul couldn't go. Yeah, I forget <laughs> the reason why. Alone. I was supposed to. I was supposed to go with you, and I forget uh, something because the, the weather changed or something was going to happen. But I forget why I couldn't make it. But I wanted to. I, I was planning on going with you. Yeah, for sure. yeah. Daryl May says any opportunity to ride with Paul Prudhomme, count me in. <laughs> Hi, Daryl. <laughs> Think you're breaking up there. And there's a beautiful XRS right there. Yeah, that's her. So again, I kind of sorry for doubling up on the photos. I couldn't remember, but uh, you know, I think it still gives a good talking point of of you know what we can be excited for. Uh, the Gen Five is something else, and especially those of you that opted for the Smart Shocks and the big gauge, uh, it truly makes the riding experience just that next level. Skidoo's across the board. I mean, you, we all know they handle uh, exceptionally well. But to have that, you know, extra edge with some of that technology is pretty, pretty awesome. That's neat. What, what is you from your memory? What do you think was your favorite part of that sled? Oh, it's kind of like a little column B, column A, the, ga the gauge and how easy it functions now and the ability to use your glove and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think something that often gets forgotten forgotten about to talk about is the ergonomics on the handlebars and all that has changed uh, it's very rider friendly i think where the buttons and all that are on the handlebars now uh, are much simpler and easier to navigate the knob is gone right uh, so i think that def that gets forgotten about and i think that uh, people will enjoy as well yeah the um as far as the gauge goes there's that one button you can program to do different things is that right the where you can program it to have smart shock control or, or whatever you want it to do. Uh, I, I'm not, I'm not exactly hundred percent. Well, there Paul. is a, in the app selector, there is a, there is a, a way so you can preference say your favorite things or the things that you do yeah. more often. You can, you can program it in a way. So it's like a, a quick click, uh, 
that's put, right. Put yeah. Line, I guess you would say. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's really cool. I can't wait to play around with it. Uh, Noble shit says 467 miles. That's difficult to believe. You sure it wasn't kilometers? I don't think I believe that. <laughs> it must have been a flat straight. No, that the Raptor is not flat and straight. That's for sure. Yeah, windy, There's... twisty. You kind of get everything, which is cool. I think that's why it's uh, uh, why it's such a sought after ride. People enjoy doing it because you, especially if you split it up over a couple of days, each day is something a little different. Uh, there are some rail beds coming out of uh, a few towns, but, um, you know, and that's not my style. I, not my favorite trails, but, but when you split it all up, then you can take a little bit of everything. You know, the Titan twisties are, are my favorite for sure. And, um, you know, and, and I think what's cool about the wrap is there's no bailout. You know, once you're halfway around, you're just going to go the other halfway anyway. So, uh, you know, for anyone that you can't cheat. So my ride, you just put it this way. You couldn't cheat. You, you, you had to go around <laughs> or you did. Right. Yeah. You're, it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be good to go through the park at that point. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. no, very, very off limits to snowmobiles. So what yes. are we looking at here? We got a, we got a garage photo of fire burning in the corner and, you know, well, you would have mentioned something or asked uh, what's been taking up my time. And I've got, I think, a few renos I had sent you. So the garage, uh, anyone that kind of knows my background, I bought an old uh, family farm and it's it, it's just old. So put a new floor. You'll see a new floor in there in that photo. So things should stay dry now. I did some uh, tile draining around it. But anyway, the picture is just for a, a talking sense where it started, you know, there it's going to be insulated soon. The TV is just on a workbench right now, but it'll have a, a TV area and all that. And I'm excited because the whole left bay, I don't ever care to put vehicles in there because I got the, a, a large barn for, for that stuff. So nice. there'll be a whole work bay for sleds and what have you seasonal, seasonal power sports. And, and uh, I'm excited for that. So the wood stove is the yeah. most key thing though. That had to go in it is. right away. It is. Now, now, what do you what do you got on the TV there? That is by chance a football game that happened to be on. Not going to lie, I'm not a football guy. Yeah, but I think it's the well, Chiefs see, playing the see Bucks. Paul, if I remember. I think it was like last see night. See Paul, the, this is where this is where Jinxie got busted last time he was on the show for you know, Paul Jinxie he puts on football to when his wife's around because he doesn't want to show. His wife, what he's really, really watching, what he's watching out, out in the garage, yeah. And, and here it is, right here, yeah, yeah. He's, he's got the mud brats, the mud brats YouTube on, you toothless know? bowling. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's he, that's what he's really watching. She walks in and he quickly flips the channel. So, you know, a lot of people would rather say they watch like ballerinas or you know, Amer America's Got Talent. Than, than say they watch uh, mud brats in public, you know. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Corey Brock says, "Where does Paul like to ride, and where are you from?" Uh, I'm I'm from Southern Ontario, um, uh, but uh, I grew up in Southern Ontario. But uh, with work, I've been I've been all over. So I've been in Wisconsin, uh, Vermont, up in Quebec. And then uh, I'm in New York for actually right now. So uh, all over the place. I've had a chance to ride pretty much all over the world. Um, in Europe, uh, Russia, uh, all out Western Canada, U.S. Um, most of the riding that I do right now is uh, up uh, Kearney way, Kearney, Ontario. But uh, between there and uh, in Quebec uh, is, is where most of the riding I do right now. Sweet. And there's the farmhouse again. Yeah. So the uh, whole deck and that house is built. So the house, I'm actually in the, the green. I'm in that uh, glassed in porch right now. I had it all set up nicely in the garage there in the previous photo, but my hotspot on my phone wasn't doing the trick for my, my uh, iPad. So hence the difficulties I had to like literally run into the house and, and I'd set up out here where it's cold. Um, but you know, I put yeah. the deck on that photo. It's not quite done. I had to do all the decorative crap on the up uh, uh, above, but, uh, one of my pride heavily, what's the word I'm looking for? 
that I'm full of pride on is striping your yard. You got to have a nice J Harley J Harley boy just says, "Wow, who's the grass master?" <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. That actually is probably the nicest thing you could have said. Um, yeah, yeah. So I have I amazing. have forty acre place, and I cut probably close to eight acres uh, with a finish mower like that. So it's it's uh, uh, a love hate relationship, but it's uh, you got to have nice grass. Nice. And Kaching Dustin Ingram comes back with a five pounder. He says, hello boys, ready, ready for a new season. And he says, Polaris number one, broken down, hashtag broken down skadoos, LOL. Paul, he, this guy, he gives it to us every week. You know, he's, he's oh, there with the Polaris jabs. That's all right. That's what makes the fun or the sport fun. So it does for sure. It for sure. And I mean, I, I heard they're coming up with a line of fire retardant um, snowmobile gear. So you might be okay, <laughs> Dustin, after all. <laughs> yeah, we're worried about flotation tech. They're all... worried about fire retardant tech. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dustin, maybe keep it for the Polaris gas tank part you need, Corey Brock says. Yeah. All right. We could go all day on that one there. So, oh, Dominator, he loves the grass lines too. He does the same thing. Yeah. Tim V's got it. He said he'd rather push a ski do than ride a Polaris. <laughs> That's going to go on for, for a while, I think, in the chat. And here we go. The the Corey Jinks, the McCormick uh, ambassador here. Yeah. Yeah. So that, again, <laughs> uh, we recently had the local fair. So I was in the parade and, and I pulled the antique class, uh, the tractor. So I helped my uncle restore that tractor. Uh, when I was just a little kid. Um, so that was uh, something that I was excited to do this year. And, you know, all this, you felt you get so used to filling up weekend after weekend after weekend in the winter uh, and weekdays with snowmobiling that, you know, when the season ends, you're like, whew, finally got a break. But then you just fill that with chores and stuff like that. So the fair was something that was cool to look forward to and something fun. That's neat. Is, is pulling like tractor pulling harder on an old vehicle like that? Like, is it, is it hard for the vehicle? I mean, uh, no, not in a tractor that size. Cause it's under horsepower for what it's built for. Like I'll run. So there's, uh, I didn't bother snoring everyone by sending the video, but you basically run out of horsepower before you break anything. So the tractor just lifts the wheels up and pretty much, one last gasp and then you push the clutch in and that's it but it is fun though that's cool and did you get out in your truck much this year that you had sent pictures of that last last year and it was pretty awesome yeah uh so that's i have 72 c10 um my wife and i throughout the summer uh, i mean it's been a busy summer with with charlotte now she was obviously in her uh, younger months at the beginning of the summer so she just turned one last week um, but we use it uh, basically for an excuse to go out for dinner once a week. We go to cruise night in any given local town, and and we'll go out for dinner and park the truck and uh, you know make it a, a an evening thing. Oh, that's pretty cool, fun times. And this is also the fall fair. Corey drinks dad of yeah. the baby. It, yeah, did she get baby of the year? Baby of the, so, so she got. <laughs> She won the cutest baby in her uh, her class. Um, you know, I had something to do with that, so that's pretty cool. Um, Sweet. And then they gave me a, a a mock award. They said, you know, dad of the dad of the show because I was the only one that had registered, and only dad that had registered a baby. Oh, that's cool. That's nice of you to do that, right? Sled five one nine says, "Hey, Paul, any insight on when us twenty twenty two owners?" are supposed to get our desk posts? It's a good question. I actually just texted my kid today because he's at a dealership asking him if he's got any desk posts. So uh, I haven't heard. Um, desk posts, are, they're, still a, they're still a struggle as far as getting the ones with the chip. Um, I know that we've been offering to people as a temporary fix for added security. Uh, there's a lock that can go over the desk post. So that is available at, at the dealership if you go and ask. Oh, sweet. Is that something they give you as a, as a free upgrade or is that something you, you, it's, 
you buy just to get you through and you can use it afterwards as well. No, I believe they've been, I believe the dealers have been giving them out. Oh, nice. Good to know. And then what are we looking at here, Corey? Well, the joke is that Charlotte got a new snowmobile that Emma gets to ride. So uh, <laughs> my wife bought herself, a, <laughs> my wife uh, bought herself a, a Renegade 850. She's pretty pumped for this year. And um, actually I talked to her cause she, it was, so it's a used, used machine. It's a 17. Whereas the white uh, with the orange, uh, the, the yeah. adrenaline. So she pulled all the orange off and changed it to uh, white and blue. So she put the white adventure bumper and the blue, like none of it's changed in the photo yet, but the blue hand guards and yeah. the blue rails and stuff like that. So I said, well, I know a guy that could probably uh, set you up with some blue decals. But she, Yeah, you let me uh, know and I'll, I'll help you out for sure. So I'll, I'll be bugging you if she decides to. Right now she's content. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I live, I think you thought I lived up North, but I just cottage up North. I, I live the other side of Brantford from you. So I'm not too far away. Right. Yeah. No, I, I think I, yeah. I think I knew yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll chat about that. That's awesome. And this is great. You're, you're with two legends here. Oh yeah. So total fanboy moment. I even apologize to Blair. So this is at heydays uh, just a few weeks ago. Paul was there too. Um, and you know, I, I've had the opportunity to meet Carl, uh, quite a few times. So the, the fanboy has worn off, uh, with Carl, but I, I made that joke to him. I'm like, Hey Carl, sorry to interrupt, but I got to get a photo with Blair. I guess you can be in it too, if you want. <laughs> so, um, you know, everyone that's, uh, that hasn't lived in a hole over the last 20 years, right. 20 years of the rev, especially we were, we were wearing our shirts. You could just see it in Cooster there. So we wore shirts, 20 years of the Rev. You know, and Blair really, really showed what that machine was capable of on the racetrack. And if you were a young a young kid that was in the snowmobiling, like you, you you just fell in love with how Blair rode and, and what he did for the sport. So uh, it was really cool to meet him and, and spend a, a few minutes chatting with him, which is really cool. Yeah, he's. I heard he's coming to the Toronto Snowmobile Show too he was on this podcast in our first season and uh what a great guy you know he's so humble and and uh so knowledgeable about the sport and i'm really looking forward to actually shaking his hand you know yeah and super nice dude T totally humble like just willing to to talk about whatever you want to talk about even if it's not even a snowmobile but uh you know everyone yeah, you know your first words to him are, "Man, I was a huge fan," and then you you go on and, and you carry on to something else. But he's he's willing to talk about whatever you want. That's neat. That's neat. And Carl Cooster, when are we going to get him on the on this podcast? <laughs> uh, on, Paul, I, hook it up. Yeah, that might be a Paul favor versus uh, versus me. I think yeah, we, could, <laughs> we, could, we could give him a call. That's not a problem. Okay, for sure. We'll chat after the show. I'd love to, I think I have emailed him and, but you know, they, they it, it kind of hits junk more than, more than it doesn't when it's, when you're talking to guys of that, like, that caliber. He's uh, being he's around on, those guys. Oh, sorry. Paul. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say he's on the go all the time. Like he's, he's, he's always got something happening. So he is a, uh, he is a tough, tough one to get a hold of. That's for sure. But being around guys like Cooster or, or even Paul, they're just a, unbelievable amount of knowledge of snowmobiles that that stray way back like it doesn't matter what year you're talking about they they just have this you know dictionary of knowledge about jetting stuff and old carves and milling heads down and all the fun old stuff they used to do to wind them up a little and 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 when you know when carl is talking it's just he's got such a demeanor about him that you just can't help but just sit and listen like a little kid because you're about to learn something cool so uh he is a pretty rad guy to be around and, and paul i bug all the time because um as you know you're you're probably familiar with the nutcracker race in uh kearney at the end of uh, march uh third week of march yeah. so uh paul and i <laughs> paul doesn't know it but well he's gonna know it, is he's dropping off a sled that's gonna be the future sled that beats him so uh right on <laughs> <laughs> that uh maybe we'll uh talk about that later in the year or get on again because uh that's gonna be a fun time um 
Uh, oh, that's sure. if anyone's not familiar with what that is. It's just a, I'll give it, do it quickly here is uh it's a vintage race that is uh Paul and I cottage in the same area. So we're, we're close by and it's a vintage race that Paul uh, uh, gets organized and there's specific rules has to be under uh, 350 CC, a single cylinder and a certain age group. Um, I already asked them no boost. So it rules out some tricks up my sleeve, but um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it, you're mostly out there, just the camaraderie of, of snowmobiling and the old vintage stuff. No one hates a vintage snowmobile. It's a good, it's going to be a good time. That's true. That's true. Yeah, Paul sent us some vintage pictures, so I'm looking forward to chatting about those too. Um, now, this is a this is uh, it looks like in my uh, sledding area here, right near Algonquin yeah, so, uh, West um, ATV. Yeah, yeah. So that's on the corner. I mean, as long as you can read, you can see in the corner the D101 and the D. Pretty uh, major arteries in terms of uh, getting in and out of of Kearney and a good gas stop. And um, ultimately, uh, this photo shows that it's a great opportunity or you should get out and, and reach out to a club and see how you can help. So that was a new warm up shack that they've always wanted to have on that corner. And, uh, you know, we actually did a little bit of uh, uh, videoing and footage for that. So there's going to be something coming out uh, either next week or the week after uh from skidoo uh and and basically we're, we're trying to promote that you know reach out to a club i'm i live three and a half hours away from that club so there's no excuse if you can get a hold of somebody offer up a weekend there's always something to be done so we put the warm-up shack out we did some signage and uh, we put a new culvert in a in a really wet spot so that'll help out, uh, for winter and the groomers because as you know groomers are heavy they tend to break through those wet spots if they get a little antsy so we can divert the water uh, obviously that makes it better yeah sweet oh, that's great and that's the thing it's uh i i think the the attitude with volunteering for clubs is changing um not so much of people wanting to volunteer but but actually getting the opportunity to volunteer it used to be it fell on deaf ears and a lot of the clubs didn't get the the information that someone filled out that checkbox on the office C permit that they wanted to volunteer. And now it's going directly to the club. So um, you, we always, I know with, in our area or local riding here, um, it, which is new Hamburg, um, or sorry, new Dundee snowmobile club. We always reach out to the, the people that, that check that box and say, Oh, well, you know, thank you for your interest in doing this. And we'll, we'll keep in the loop of, of events like the staking and cleanups and things like that. So, and we, we do a mass blast on that. So it's pretty cool. Um, Corey Brock says he applied for the snow pass grant from Skidoo for my club and hoping they pull through. So, yeah. Well, it's, and, and that's awesome. And Corey, you should, and, and it's, it's going to be, it's revolving year to year. So even if uh, maybe you don't get it this year, keep applying because, uh, you're bound to get it at some point. And um, I, I, Paul could probably speak to this too. I think that's another thing that really sets apart Skidoo as a brand is it's not just about putting out snowmobiles. It's about helping snowmobiling on the whole, you know, that it's, it's think about how much money that is per year that they're forking out to, to generally just make snowmobiling better for everyone. You know, that's not just going to benefit a Skidoo person. It's going to benefit every uh every guy out there that runs whatever brand so uh, i think that's pretty admirable oh for yeah, sure no, exactly we need the uh we need the trail system that's for sure so without the trails we don't have much so and obviously it's you a, don't you don't have a, sled sales <laughs> yeah exactly we don't have sled sales without that but it's uh it's amazing though as far as uh, how when you really look at the big picture on the trail system and how incredible uh, you know vast it is i guess you could say and yet majority of it's all volunteers you know so um continued support is uh is is needed and, and well welcomed nice yeah I, I love the fact that that uh, skidoo offers the opportunity for the grants so there you go well now we're going to get into some of the paul, paul submissions here uh uh tonight and and we talked earlier that he's he's been an innovator for a lot of the the cool um, parts and accessories from Skidoo, and this is one of my favorites uh, that I installed last year, and it's the E Link. Yeah, it's uh, that was a, a fun project. It was, uh, you know, my job really it falls around kind of understanding what irritates people. You know, it's as far as 
you know, what frustrates them with their ride. And I, I ride a lot. I, I do about 6,000 kilometers a year. Um, kilometers. Kilometers. So what's that about <laughs> 4,500 miles a year. And uh, yeah, so switching, I, I switched to a uh, electric visor going back a few years ago and I got so frustrated with the cord, you know, and the thing breaking off or I forget about it. I jump off the sled and, and, and break the tab and just not a, trying to manage that extra cord. I never found fun. So, um, you know, it kind of stimulated us to, to think of something new and out of the box. And obviously we had, we had done the, uh, the oxygen helmet and we had perfected the magnet system on the back as far as how the, uh, how the cord attaches. And we figured, well, maybe there's something that we can do here and, Ultimately, we were able to uh, combine the desk cord and the power cord all in one and uh, come up with a, a much better solution than, than what's been out there in the past. Yeah. And, and uh, Dominator says that E-Link makes his life easier when we ride. I think people have to realize that when you you can see in the picture the, the actual um, de the desk uh, um, cap that basically snaps onto the ball, you have to realize that when you actually snap that onto the desk post, that e-link clicks right in. There's no, you don't have to monkey around with. Okay, now I've now I've connected the desk key. Now I have to connect the 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 e-link. It's a one hand operation. As soon as you click that, it goes click into place, and uh, and you're off to the races. Um, it's a beautiful idea. Yeah, it's uh, it, and and the reality is, I don't think. Uh, I don't think is <laughs> enough people really realize what it's all about. Uh, there's still a lot of people that don't understand what e-link is and, and um, going forward with gen five, we've actually simplified the system even more. Uh, it's, it's uh, much more compact, um, lower retail, uh, lower time to install. Uh, so 15 minutes to install versus an hour. So, uh, a nice. lot of things that we've done to help save money for the consumer and end up with e even a, a better product. But uh, yeah, we, when you ride with that, it's like you're not even riding with a, an electric helmet. And, you know, I say electric helmet, but you could have anything electric heated on your body that you could plug in and warm up. Uh, if you had heated goggles, you could use this too. So it's uh, very versatile as, as, supplying, as far as supplying power to the body. Yeah, oh, for sure. It's a, it's amazing. And again, it's like, it works great with the oxygen because you have E-Link e on both sides of the helmet cord. But if you have a mission or another heated um, helmet, that uh, the E-Link is a great accessory because you don't have to worry about plugging and unplugging the RC. And how many times have you seen a buddy with the old style cords get off his sled and walk away? And it's like that cartoon dog getting, getting yanked with the chain, right? It, it eliminates that totally. Yeah, or even or even worse when it breaks the tab off inside the uh, plug. And yeah, that's and you're halfway you around the right? world. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, Paul Thoreau says uh, he links the best thing he's installed on his sled. So it um it uh, Corey said he he'll, he'll get it for the Gen Five. Um, he didn't personally think it was worth the two hundred bucks. It was, but I told him it's not a gimmick, man. This thing's amazing. It's so easy. It's so easy. Here we go. Here's the base plate right here. Yeah, and I uh, I found that part. I found that part number. So if you want, uh, if you want it, it's eight six zero two zero two two zero eight. There we go. I just put it in the chat so everybody can see it. Part number eight six zero two zero two two zero eight. Um, and do you know what the retail value is on that? Um. I'll say around $125. It depends if it's Canadian or US, right? So that's not but bad around $125. At all. Yep. That's great. And it's got a couple of different mounting points in it too. I can see like their traditional, uh, uh, that that's where if you have your own camera bag or whatever, and you want to use the link, um, uh, pop in, uh, connectors, yeah, you can, right. You can use it. There. Yeah. You can, you can, you can bolt the link clips to the top. So if you have a traditional, um, if you have like a, a fuel can or a bag, you can click that in just as if you did on your on your 2022 Skidoo. 
Uh, or you could take that off and, and you see all the different holes that are throughout the uh, the plate itself. That gives you a, like a drilling template. So if you wanted to add your own box or like I mentioned earlier, a camera holder, um, you could then bolt that to the uh, to the plate. And then depending on depending on what vehicle you were putting on it, there's different uh, different tabs also. So say if you were putting on a Polaris or an Articat, it would have a, a side type mount to uh, to mount the plate oh that's sweet and in the picture in the inset picture in the bottom left uh is it is that plate underneath the the uh the link uh oil can there i hard for me to see on that particular one it it could be um I it could it be I, I can't really tell yeah yeah oh that's cool uh, so do you want to do that how do you want to do this uh this contest ready to give away one of these things do you want to do a random draw now or do you want to have people send in send me in photos of uh of their their creative uh, uh well we did two, 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 use. we yeah we could do two things i could uh you could give one away now and i could give you another one and and uh, we could do a follow-up and see uh we could have a vote on who's going to be the most creative as far as uh, uh you know where they're going to utilize their their link accessories beyond their snowmobile okay, perfect. Site. Perfect. We'll do that. Okay. So, so here we, here we go. Jinxies looks like he's getting up for something here, but we'll, uh, I don't know how many. My computer's not plugged in and it's giving me the, you better freaking do okay, something you, quick here, bud. Warning. You, okay. You get that done and I'm going to call up a random, a randomizer and, uh, and then we'll get, we'll get Jinxie to count down. There's 60 people in the chat right now. And, uh, so we'll count down, uh, we'll do a random draw from one to 60 and then we'll get Jinxie to count down from the top of who, who wins this thing. Does that sound fair? That works. It's it's easy for you and me, Paul. He he's going to have to do all the work on this thing. <laughs> we'll wait till he gets back, and we'll 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 tell him the bad news. Jinx, he's not not like he's holding us up at all. Does anyone have any questions that uh, for for Paul while, while we're waiting for for Corey to get back with his uh, charge cord? Uh, Pro players, Rob asked me if I if I'm going to have a booth at the Toronto show. I'll be in the Energy Power Sports booth on Saturday. I'm going to do some lives from that all day long, so it'll be pretty good. Hey, welcome back, Corey. Yeah, good news. I found an extension cord from like 1950. So good. <laughs> that's a problem when you, you probably spent like hours getting set up in the garage and then, and then, then your technology didn't work. And it's like, <laughs> now you have to move and everything's out there still. I had it dialed. I had a light shining. It was like a, it was like a, s a set a Hollywood set. It was all mixed. <laughs> and then Hollywood when set. I signed on, cause it had, I had enough connection that when I was just sitting in queue by myself, sound audio everything worked mint and then as soon as you i came into uh the room with you guys then all of a sudden i was stuttery i couldn't hear you and i was like oh boy yeah i seen you stuttering there so listen there's 66 people in the in the chat okay so i'm going to do a random number between one and 66 i'm going to tell you the number and i want you to start have you got the chats open on your computer there Corey? i, I do yeah Okay, so when I give you the number, I count down from the top, but don't don't count down 60. Like if there's repeats, like uh, count down the unique names. So I've got, if I'm looking here, I got Tim V commenting twice in a row. That's only one, right? You're going to skip any of the duplicates. Holy okay? cow. How am I supposed to? I know. I'm on an iPad here, so let me see. I don't know. You, you, well, I, I can maybe, I can help you. I'll do it. Okay. I'll do the generate and then you got to give me a bit to count down through the names. Okay. Unless it's like two or three. So uh, a random number between one and 66, I'm hitting the generator and it's 21. So we're just going to go through here and we'll, we'll okay, do it. We can do this together. I think. So we got what just fly Tim V pro Polaris, Corey, Jacob, Mark. So that's five. Tim V again. Is it again? So still at five. Yep. 
Oh, it's gonna be hard to keep track of who's. I got it. I got it. <laughs> okay, I'll read the name. Renegade X, Anthony. No, just hold on. I got it. Okay. Uh, uh, Snow SDM, him. David Barker, Cranky Sleds, Keith. I Wisco think it's Sled Rob Heads. I, I think Uncle I've got, got Rob Overholt. How far? We'll give it to Rob Overholt. All right. He's, that's that's what I got at 21 with no repeats. 21's past how many fingers enough. I Congratulations. have. Congratulations. So. <laughs> I know. You, you don't take your pants off on this account. I think we figured it out. Rob Overholt, congratulations. You won the, the Link base plate. Is that what it's called? The Link? Uh, universal that, base plate. That accessory. Universal base plate. And uh, we'll uh, send me an email, fanphoto at, at mudbrads.com. I'll get your address, and Paul will send that out to you right away. Or at some point between now and, you know, 2027, let's say. Yeah. It's in you stock. Know. We'll get it out. Oh, that's right. Perfect. Yeah. The, uh, uh, congrats, Rob, uh, the coffee water beer says the boys are stressing. Oh, that was, that was too much homework for us there. And then what we'll do is we're going to have you guys send in fan photos of your creative link usage. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be on a skidoo. It could be your creative use link on your ATV, on your, on your, uh, your player snowmobile, on your Arctic cat, on your Yamaha. Uh, if you're using link, show us something really creative that you actually are, are using your link for and then we'll uh we'll we'll give away another one of these things pretty cool thank you so much paul we really appreciate that that's no awesome problem. and if one was to find if one was to kind of find their way to me you know <laughs> I'm, I'm sure i'm sure that could be arranged <laughs> not a problem this is another genius the the, the uh the link accessories are like the wily e. coyote you know, accessories of the world. And this is another gene genius one is the link um, adjustable windshield. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and right, we've got two versions of it. So we've got a low to medium and a medium to high. And I might be, I might be thinking we might even have a high to an ultra high. Um, but uh, yeah, it has about three, three to four inches of movement. Um, and you know, when you're out riding, typically like when Corey leaves at four 30 in the morning, it's going to be a lot colder than uh, two in the afternoon. So, uh, you know, just flip the lever and, and give it a pull and, and you're up in the, in the taller position. And as the day, uh, as the day warms up, just uh, pull the lever out and, and slide it down and, uh, get a little bit more, uh, of that warmer air around you. So it works, works really well. That's neat. What, the what kind of snowmobilers? When uh, we were younger, was looking cool, not having a windshield. But man, I think as you get a little more mature, you realize how much nicer it is to be out of the wind. <laughs> it's nice to see that you're well, maturing, that... Uh, Corey, because uh, I remember seeing you just with the little bikini uh, uh, windshield <laughs> on all of your stuff. But man, it did look cool. <laughs> it looked cool, yeah. <laughs> or cold. Lots well, of things. It it's cold. It... They do go down. The one I seen at, at the dealership, it actually went down pretty low. So it's, uh, and then it, it actually extends a few inches, like maybe th four inches, I think it was. It, it went higher, uh, which is kind of neat. So it, it does have kind of a sporty look. What, what do you think the, who, who's the buyer for this? Like what kind of sled do you think someone that, that uses this windshield would be riding? Well, it depends. It's, uh, you see it all over, you know, you see, you, you see, uh, uh, people with just the like an adrenaline, um, uh, you know, to, to even myself, even myself on my XRS. Um, I, I enjoy it just because the temperature changes and I wear a lot of the lightweight gear. So just the, uh, say the, the Sympatex and I uh, use a lot of the different layering system. Um, and even with that, sometimes when it's, uh, when it, when the temperature starts to drop, it's, uh, so nice just to, uh, flip the lever and, and add that extra protection for you. So all, all, all users could, could benefit from this type of windshield. Nice. I think it's neat because different heights, different height riders as well. Like I found that I got a lot of wind blowing at me on the, uh, the Renegade stock windshield. Um, where if I put the bikini windshield on the, the, the blade, it, the wind hit me in the chest, not my face. So it was a, 
it was a more comfortable ride. So this gives you the ability of, of having the adjustable height to get the wind off of you, you know, um, yeah. as opposed it's to a, one or the other, you know? Yeah. It's a very good point too, because it's, there's no, uh, there's no, uh, you know, fixed adjustment on it. You could slide it anywhere between say those three and a half inches as height. So exactly if you want it to hit hit you more in the chest versus say right in the right in the helmet you know you could you can dial that in to get kind of that uh that perfect uh height slash fit for for the rider absolutely great idea there very clever <laughs> this I is all by far my comment. favorite what's he say ladies and children or windshields are for ladies <laughs> listen i i don't i'm not a i don't rock a big windshield let's be clear but to have the low windshield on uh over a long ride when it's frigid out it just makes the difference so it is what it is yeah, yeah. i don't know if it's michael being milder's older or, with you yeah i don't know if it's being older or smarter but i've got a whole selection of windshields in the in the garage so depending on what the temperature is going to be, I'll, I'll, I'll put the different one on, but, uh, riding in Northern Quebec, uh, especially this winter and end of January, uh, I actually even put the, the ultra high on because it was cold. So, uh, my body appreciated the wind protection at that point. Yeah. Nice. Michael Milner's with it. He likes a tall windshield. He says, maybe he's just getting old. Yeah. <laughs> It's all about staying, staying warm, getting the wind off you, right? The, the cold will ruin a ride fast. And then we got the, the oxygen helmet here. Yeah, that was, uh, I would say that's probably one of my favorite helmets. That's when I had the, uh, I was in the clothing group. So that was the last project I did for clothing. And, um, but it was a kind of a personal pet peeve thing of mine to want to, want to dramatically improve the, 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 the helmet and the experience that you get and, Everything from the vision to warmth to sound deadening to lightweight, um, you know, those were those were all kind of the main things around what that helmet was all uh, all about. And uh, I think overall we've had uh, really good really good success with it so far. Yeah, it's a great helmet. I, you know, the best part of mine I love is the light right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having that integrated light, uh, the LED that, light. That, yeah. Have you tried? Uh, have you tried the carbon version? No, I have. Oh, I I had one in my hands. It's super light, but I don't find the weight of mine overly horrible. You know, so yeah. and uh, and it would be a shame for me to get a carbon because I don't know whether you've seen my helmet or not. But hang on. <laughs> But yeah, the uh, that I I wouldn't want to wrap a carbon, and that's what I did did with mine here. Oh, okay. So all right, yeah, cool. But uh, yeah, you can Very get that cool. on o two o two wraps ca right there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so it's the uh, yeah, it adds a little different look to them. That's for sure. You know, but uh, yeah, I love that wrap. I love the helmet. I. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I actually have a mission I'm giving away. So um, you'll have to follow my YouTube channel if you want to see how to win my uh, my mission helmet. But I won't give away my, my I won't give away my oxygen. I'm not going to do good. that. That's oh wait, good. let's go back. What was your involvement in the E Tech oil? Uh, well, E Tech and 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 prior, but the uh, the uh, I was involved in starting the, the whole, uh, XPS brand. So, um, in the past, obviously we were, we were basically a ski -Doo and a sea company. So we had sea oil and ski oil, and then there was Bombardier oil. And, uh, and then obviously we, we had Bombardier ATVs would switch to Can-Am and, you know, the brands were, uh, evolving dramatically. And, you know, it was kind of like, uh, come up with a, a solution for one brand of, one brand that fits all of our product lines. So um, we could build upon that that brand instead of all of the different uh, segmentation that we had in the past. So uh, XPS is becoming more and more popular as a brand and, and we've expanded it too. Um, 
uh, into cleaners, you know, all types of transmission oils, hydraulics, oil, you, you name it, we have, a, we have a, an oil, oil or a lubricant when it comes to XPS. And um, obviously, E-Tech is a very uh, unique engine compared to uh, other manufacturers. So uh, that, uh, that motor has a different appetite for oil than uh, traditional oil. So it was, uh, it was very interesting. I didn't, I obviously I don't work on the engineering side for the guys that put in all of the hours that they do to to develop this stuff but um, it was it was a pretty neat process to watch uh, the evolution of where this oil started and where it is now uh, you know throughout the entire development of, of the e-tech engines even before uh, it was introduced or the you know the, the 600 e-tech was introduced to even now the uh, the oil continues to evolve to you know, meet the new demands with the turbo version, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, nice. Well, that's the thing. It's a, uh, um, I, I can't believe some of the products you have, like that degreaser. I don't know what's in it, but it's magic, man. It's uh, the XPS degreaser. If, if you, anybody hasn't tried it, go to your local dealer or order it online and, and grab it because it's, it's amazing. It, it's better than super clean. It smells really good. Um, and it, it'll take, it'll clean up your sled better than new really well. Yeah. And I've used a clutch, uh, um, the clutch cleaner too. And it works, it works dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that's the unique thing too, with all of our, all of our stuff, whether it goes in your engine or it goes on the body work of the sled, it's not something that, uh, we just take someone else's product and put our name on it. This stuff literally goes through thousands of hours of testing and validation. So if you can imagine, and you, and you can imagine all of the different types of plastics and stuff that we've had. So that degreaser, um, the testing that went into that to ensure that someone's not going to spray it on their vehicle and it's going to cause premature fading or anything like that or cracking or making the brittle or the, the, the plastics uh, harder. So it's, a, it's quite the process uh, that we have to go through with all of those products that we introduce. Yeah. Oh, it, it shows because they really do work, you know. They really do. That degreaser I, or something I, else. Like I, I, I am a huge fan of that stuff. It works so good. Yeah. It, Dave Nerona turned me on to it. And it was like, I've probably bought three or four bottles of it since. It's just like, it's crazy how good, how good that degreaser really is. Well, we have the big jugs of it too. So. Yeah. Oh, nice. I'll have to get that. Now, now, did you see this XPS product that uh, John Luke from Energy Power Sports had? We got, oh, the, we got the, the XPS uh, the, maple syrup. Maple syrup. Yeah, I did. Actually, I saw one of his ads with that on. I, I, I haven't I haven't tested that out. So he, he may have to send me some to test to make sure it goes through it, the proper validation. It's quite good. You know what? When, when we ride together, I'll bring you up a bottle. How's that? Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. He had, he had dealers when he launched that because that was giveaways um we did for him for uh for people that spring ordered and uh other dealers got wind of it and were calling him and asked him what the part number was in the in the catalog to order it <laughs> <laughs> that's good but yeah so john luke actually showed me this product in the store the one day i thought it was really clever and it's ice fishing sleigh yeah the, the link sleigh so um, you know, we had sleighs back way back in the sixties and seventies and we kind of got out of it. And, uh, uh, but you know, we saw, we saw a need as far as, uh, you know, and there's a lot of aftermarket companies making various sleighs out there. So we figured that we could, uh, again, address, address different consumer irritants and, and makes, make something better. So a bunch of cool things with this sleigh is that, uh, it has throughout it the ability to attach our link system. So on the top hoods, uh, multiple spots to attach bags or fuel cans, etc. And then within the lower body of it too, there's there's additional spots to lock and secure uh, anything that you're carrying. So it's not going to be uh, rolling all over the place. So a lot more uh, ability to to say store more in a say a somewhat smaller compact. Uh, sleigh yeah nice so, and it's it's quite roomy like when you say compact it, it it's not small it's got a lot of uh, a lot of room inside that thing 
Yeah, it does. It, there's a lot of room in it, and it's very well organized in the sense uh, if you want to put dividers in it, so you could take a cut out plywood dividers uh, to to segment uh, uh, what you want to put in it. Um, so, uh, you know, lots of space inside, lots of additional space on the outside, uh, a lot of neat little features. So you, you actually have the ability that uh, if you want it to steer even better. Uh, the same the same carbides that you use on your pilot skis. Actually, you can put uh, I think it's four four or six sets of carbides that you can actually install on the bottom base of this, so it'll track better. Um, obviously, you've got the two the two different doors, so easy access as far as front and back. But uh, overall, or you know, really really nice durable sleigh, and it it tracks uh, very well behind the sled. Well, Corey Jinks fit in it if we want to take him around the wrap in a day. Yeah, I was actually just thinking that Corey would Corey would fit in that, so that would that might be a fun a fun experiment to uh, to take him on the wrap in that. Hey, listen, a bottle of Fireball and uh, <laughs> I, I'd make pillows. him wear one of the <laughs> <laughs> and an open face vintage ski doo helmet. That's what you need. Yeah. Yeah, Roost Nation. That's what that is. And, yeah, nice. <laughs> Here's the link one plus one, or is it just the plus one seat, or is it one plus one? Uh, one plus one. So uh, this seat originally started, obviously, when we did the, uh, when we did worked on the Rev uh, 20 years ago. Um, that was uh, the first sled out there, too, that um, not only innovative as far as the forward driving, but the ability to easily click on an additional seat for a passenger. So this system has evolved uh, over time. Uh, um, in the case of just clicking on a passenger on the Gen 4 and Gen 3 versions, we actually went to a uh, more of a re just replace the because it was so easy to replace the driver's seat. So just unclick the driver's seat and then you've got the optimal setup for both driver and passenger and then click in the uh, the backrest and the uh, the handguards, and then when we went to yeah. Gen Five, we've switched it up again, uh, where we've uh, we've been able to uh, just click on a uh, a passenger seat again and have it mold perfectly with the uh, with the driver's seat. Yeah, that's a great idea, and and you can get heated uh, hand hand grips on those as well. Can you on the plus yeah, one, you can or get, is that you only can get, on? No, you can get heated heated handle grips for it, and you can also get a heated version of the uh, driver passenger seat. Also, nice, that's great. Corey Brock says, "Hey, Jinxie, those uh, maple syrups were for energy customers only." All right. Well, unless you're famous, like Gary said. That's right. <laughs> Got to so play you mean I'll never? Somehow. So I'll never get a bottle, is what you're saying. You know, <laughs> I'm sure you have a ball. You can't even pretend. I did the labels for him. I won't lie. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no licensing was broken at uh, in creating these labels. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one sec. <laughs> I just did what I was told to do. I don't. I don't take any creative uh, right right to that. <laughs> <laughs> so here's your uh, your high beam accessory lights it's unfortunate because the picture i found online doesn't actually have them on it's the the driver must be using his low beams there yeah um, he must have his low you beams can on. Th that's right off the skidoo website and it's like yeah. uh i'm thinking why didn't they put the high beams on but there you I go it's uh, i don't know it, they look good. They mount up there, and then for the Gen Five, they're they're a little bit lower profile. Is that right? Yeah, the high beams. We did a different setup. We're actually reusing the same um, the same car, or, uh, sealed lens system that is the stock headlight on the Gen Five, uh, and we've repositioned it down uh, in the uh, the front center of the belly pan. So it's the same headlights oh, cool. uh, that we're, re we're we've been able to reuse, just relocate into a different area. Okay, and but I've seen the blizzard shots with them kind of right beside the eyes. What are those? Like they're well, they're kind of right beside the headlight. 
Yeah, well, on the Gen 5, we've uh, we've got two sets. Uh, so the high beams on the Gen 5 is mounted in the front grill, and then we've got a, okay. an auxiliary light, and those are the ones that you see mounted up uh, by the stock headlight to the left and the right. Um, those ones actually work really, really well up there at uh, uh, wide and wide and long. Uh, uh, it, it really the combination between the high beams and the auxiliary light on the Gen 5. First, you get like a huge difference with the stock light, but you you combine it with the two two other accessory lights, and it just it's it's absolutely awesome. It just fills in all the gaps and uh, just wicked lighting that you get on the Gen Five with with uh, all the including the accessory lights. Nice. Why do you think it took Skidoo so long to come out with an LED solution? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I I've been begging for it for years it, uh, it, is, it is something it's, yeah it's, people you know that, that, i think for... that, that it's a fair question it's it's um when you look at I, I guess each manufacturer when you look at what they come out with you know everyone's coming out with new stuff all of the time um and could be maybe a bit of priorities uh you know we're working on a new suspension uh, another manufacturer could have been working on a light type thing. So kind of a, a sequencing, sequencing of events. Um, you know, when you, uh, when you go and, and, and ride a skidoo, you know, I, I, I don't want to be biased, but I think that the overall ride and the way the suspension works or SAS suspension or all of the trick stuff that we're coming out with, um, you know, there was a lot of focus on that. And then, uh, you know, the, the lighting was maybe a little bit more secondary. I don't know. I uh, can't really speak for, for that side of it. But, um, you know, it's it's all about the different uh, sequencings of, of events of when things come out. And sometimes, too, uh, you know, when you already have a platform out there, it's, it's kind of tough to go and change the headlights halfway between that platform. So then you're kind of stuck. Do you wait till the new one? Um, so, and, and headlights is tricky business. It's, it's not a... It's not an easy thing. It's very expensive. Um, and obviously, when you look at all of the different, uh, you know, the vehicles that we're building and stuff like that. So it's a, it's a, it's a big investment as far as um, upgrading and changing out the headlights. I will say you did a good job with the Gen 5. They're, they're, they're dynamite looking, you know. It's, uh, and that's the thing. It's, it, I, I was thinking, I must have been waiting to get it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's, and, and, and again, too, you run into different suppliers and, and uh, I think the cool thing, and, and obviously, too, when we go and we try our things, we always, you know, we're, we try the competition out, too. So I can, I can tell you that um, compared to anyone else out there, that this is by far the best lighting system when it comes to on a snowmobile. Now you're getting me excited. <laughs> This is another one of my favorite accessories right here is the adjustable riser block. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. Like you mentioned earlier in the show, when it came to the windshield and we're all different body sizes and heights and, and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, and then some of us prefer sitting down or even as the day changes or the terrain changes, or you go a little bit off trail or you want to stand up ride. Uh, just with the little flick of the lever there, you can go and, and instantly change the uh, the height of your bars. So you can really customize it and and uh, to your liking and or fine tune it as the uh, as the day and the trails uh, go on. Oh, it's true. Like for stand, you can sit down and ride. Then you need you want to stand up through a whooped out section. You can flip that thing up and stand up, and away you go. We, I put that on every sled, like up until the, the gen four. And then now I've got the forward adjustable riser on there, but, uh, um, on the older XP and XS chassis, that's, it's a must have accessory, I think. Yeah. Yeah. All my sleds, I, I, I run the adjustable fixed riser on it. Yeah. We had the, uh, we had the, um, rip and grip racing riser on the, on the 2009 600 that we still own. And uh, I took it off and put that that block on it, the tall one, the eighty inch. Um, can't beat it, that's for sure. Yeah. So it looks like you got a heydays photo up there. Yeah, we got some personal photos now. This is good stuff now. Yeah. So oh, that's uh, <laughs> so that's uh, 
I'm with uh, with Nolan Ferris there. He's uh, he's awesome. He's he does pretty much all of our spring and fall tours. Um, he's kind of our host that we have, and just a super guy, diehard ski do enthusiast. Uh, with the new stuff, he's got a collection of the old, so it's always fun doing interviews with uh, with Nolan. Uh, but in that case, uh, heydays, it was my, my 30th year of, uh, going to the heydays, which I get, I still get excited every year when it's, uh, when it comes fall time to be able to attend that event. And, and in this picture, I was just basically, uh, doing a walk around with Nolan, uh, discussing all of the new key, uh, gen five accessories. Sweet. And you didn't get your Muskoka dinner jacket, the. Uh that you had to come up with your own solution there? Uh, actually, I was, uh, I was trying to support, uh, my other brand. And that is a, that is a Lynx version of the, uh, ski do dinner jacket. Oh, sweet. Cool. Yeah, so there you go. Was, I, I kind of like, like I mentioned where I like to customize my sled, just little tweaks to make it somewhat unique. Uh, I, I was the only one there, I think with the, uh, the Lynx attire, uh, that, that sweet. specific one. That that's been a long time coming too. I mean, there's there was a lot of cry out for for Lynx gear and and Mock Z gear now too. Last year, um, so it's it, it's nice to see that the Lynx has came on board with hats and caps and toques and dinner jackets and all kinds of things like that. We lost them again. Oh, you know this picture, yeah, no, Corey. Oh yeah. So yeah. So actually. <laughs> Actually, Corey's uh, Corey and MJ when they were doing their uh, rain date together out on the Gen Five, uh, I think it was. I think the trails might have been. That was the last day they they were officially open, or maybe they were. I got a special pass, uh, but uh, I felt sorry for the two of them and uh, figuring that they were they were rain soaked puppies and invited them for a end of the year uh, kind of snowmobile get together dinner. So we were all together that night in my cottage and and. Uh, had a good dinner and a few drinks and a whole bunch of laughs. So it was a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. I missed the invite on that. I, I was waiting for Corey to, to send me an invite there, you know, so I'll blame your neighbor. I I'll blame your neighbor. Yeah, that's right. You can do that. So I love your, uh, your coffee table there. Yeah. That's a, that's one of my favorite sleds of all time, just from a design point of view. So that's my 76 250 RV and it's uh yeah, some people, some people, uh, they come in and they're like, "What are you doing? You got a snowmobile in your cottage?" And I'm like, "Well, that's that's what paid all the bills here, so <laughs> it's my place. That's I'm right. gonna do what I want. So I want a sled in there." But uh, did you there's me that, that walked since... in and went, "Oh my God, you have a snowmobile! That's amazing! <laughs> <laughs> what a great idea! I'm getting one." <laughs> You're phoning yeah. your wife right now. <laughs> Can you move the Olympic inside? Stat. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, did you own that for long or did you just buy that as a, as a collectible? Uh, the snowmobile? Oh, yeah. uh, it's a long story. I got a good friend of mine out in Brainerd, Minnesota. And, and I had, I had, uh, this was going back, I want to say 20, 25 years ago. And, uh, I reached out to my old buddy, Bill Fullerton. And I said, Hey Bill, I said, I want to get an old sled. And, uh, I want to restore it. I've, uh, you know, I've, I always, you know, I grew up on sleds, but I was never into restoring or had any collectibles. And he goes, I'll find you something. So anyways, uh, about a couple of weeks later, he called me up and said, come pick up your sled. I'm like, okay. So he found me a 1972, 292 baby triple blizzard. And oh, nice. uh, yeah, it was nice, but I didn't realize what it was. So Anyways, I cut. Well, this is kind of an odd bird, you know. Was, I didn't, I didn't really remember that sled, you know. You know, I grew up on a little Elam type thing, so I didn't, I didn't really know what what actually I had or what he had given me. And anyway, so I started working on it, and and uh, a friend of mine called me, and we were talking, and he was always into restoring sleds, and he's talking about his his two fifty RV that he has, and I said, "Are you serious? You have one of those?" I said, "That's my favorite sled of all times." I said, would you be interested in selling it or trading it? And he's like, well, what do you got to trade? And I said, I got a 292 Blizzard. And he goes, what do you mean you want to trade? 
He goes, how much more money do you want? I'm like, I don't want any money. Yeah. You want, you're serious. You want to trade your, 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 your TNT. And anyways, so I traded them and, and, uh, that's kind of the, the short of the story, but, uh, I wish I kind of had my 292 Blizzard back also with this one. But. That, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Noble shit said he's, he parked his KX125 many years ago in his third floor apartment. A snowmobile is no way I could get one of those brought up three stories in the stairwell. <laughs> <laughs> well, True if you that. try, make sure you video it. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> These are the days right here. Look at the snow. Yeah, that was uh, one of uh, one of four trips that we did to Quebec this year, uh, this past year, and um, I forget what town we were in, but uh, we left from Temiskaming and we went. Uh, oh, I think we did. I think we did about six hundred k that day. So we were stopping for lunch. It was cold. Uh, but it was exciting for me because uh, my son hadn't been riding in a few years, so he made the trip up and uh, uh, got to take him out, and he got to try the uh, well, the, the Gen Four out, the eight fifty, and uh, it was just a it was a lot of a lot of fun. And the so, fancy red skis. Uh, yeah, those are my fancy there red is, skis. That I love those. It looks great. You need the red spindles, though, right? Like <laughs> yeah. Now, MJ sent me this picture, but you had already sent it to me, and this really piqued my curiosity now. What's the story on the crossing of Lake Ontario? Yeah, well, that was that was way back. So I, I worked for, uh, for a dealer in southern Ontario um, while I was in high school, and uh, I'm on the left there with the uh, black cap and the jean jacket. Um, the guy with the red cap was kind of like a second dad to me, Gary Potyuk, who, uh, from Niagara. And, uh, he was, a he ended up working for Bombardier also. He was the district sales manager for Southern Ontario for Skidoo for many, many years. And then, uh, in the white there was Henry Bita, who I worked for at the time. So he always had this, uh, he always had this thing about riding snowmobiles on water and, um, Back then, we were big into drag racing, and uh, we won. We won New York State. Uh, we won the A Stock Championship with at New York State, which was like shocking that we won because the uh, the uh, Polaris Indies were really fast at that time, and they kind of dominated everything. And, and we beat them. And, and during one of the interviews, um, Stephen, his son, who was driving the sled, mentioned about you know his dad wanting to cross Lake Ontario on a snowmobile and. And then of course all the news media and everyone jumped on it and and uh i kind of i kind of took it upon myself being the young kid there i think i was 17 and uh i said well you want to do it i'll build a sled and i didn't know much back then uh, about them uh you know as far as the engines and stuff goes but i could take stuff apart and put stuff back together and, and i started on this thing and um basically uh it was this summer of it was the summer of 80 Eight, August of 88, we, uh, we left Port Dalhousie and uh, we basically crossed Lake Ontario uh, and landed on uh, Toronto Island. So it was, uh, it, was a, it was a pretty crazy, cool thing back in the day. And, and then the, uh, the following year, we did a, a stunt uh, to raise money for charity on uh, the old Welland Canal. And uh, we did lap after lap after lap out there, and we uh, we did a hundred miles on it before we uh, we ran out of gas and it sank. So wow, that's kind of my earlier years of playing on the water and doing silly things. That's neat. And you actually rode it. You were the pilot. I didn't ride it. My boss at the time he rode it, so that was Henry on it. That's in the middle of Lake Ontario, right there. I was, that's uh, crazy. I was, I took that photo. I had a, a camera in one hand and a, in a video camera in the other. So, uh, I videoed them going across the lake there and yeah, it was, it was, it was quite the thing back in the, back in the day before they had GoPros. That's for sure. Oh, absolutely. Well, and this is, well, it? that's way before like water cross is a, is a thing now in, in a series and a race series and all that. And this is way before any of that. So it's yeah, pretty, well, this, uh, pretty rad to, to see that. Yeah. And it, you know, there was, there was some guy, you know, uh, well, Jaws, Greg Balshan, he was, he was big into, he started in water cross and then there was 
Mark Mackey from out in Minnesota and stuff like that. So there was some circuits and stuff, but, uh, okay. um, you know, not like what these guys are, are, are doing on the sleds nowadays. You know, it's, it's unbelievable how fast they are, uh, and the things oh. that they're doing. So I, I have fond memories of a youth watching jaws at the, the, um, when, when Holly Gully used to be in Exeter, they had ponds there and they used to have water crosses there and jaws would just instead of crossing the pond he'd just go out there and do circuits and figure eights yeah. and, and everything that was that was an old skidoo rv right yeah, yeah. so wh- what is I, I i don't know whether you mentioned it but what is it that that uh that beat is riding on here uh that was an ss25 so uh that would be a 19 oh, yeah. that was an 80, 1984 and uh yeah, the 462 or something in it 462? yeah they came stock with a 462 when we went across lake ontario we had a 521 um nice. with the big, big 40 millimeter carbs and everything and uh we we crossed i think it uh i want to say it was just under 40 minutes it took us to cross lake ontario so that was from port Dalhousie to hanlon's point on uh, toronto island and then uh and then when we did the distance when we got the distance record, we had put uh, the the 582 Mach 1 engine in it. Yeah, all terrain TV said, "Is that a Safari?" And no, it's not. It's a the the SS25 was a Formula hood with, but it was in yellow. Um, yeah, nice sled. Say, I, I I I would buy one today if I could find one. Yeah, but it, it was a awesome. same same basic frame as a Safari. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, do you need large paddles or did it really matter back then? Large paddles didn't exist back then. So no, that's I, think, right. uh, <laughs> I think that we had, I think that sled, I, I recall it had like a three quarter inch paddle on it. And, you know, our big trick was throw the track on backwards because it got a little bit more aggressive, but, uh, that, uh, you know, when you have something that works, that thing worked like you could have the skis in the water and take off. And it was, it was, it was a blast to ride on water. It works so, so well. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a, it was a lot of fun back in the day and, you know, it's growing up, who would ever thought, to, you know, doing something, doing something like that. So it was a fun shop to work at and got to experience a lot of, a lot of cool things. And obviously kind of, uh, spiked my interest in pursuing the career that, uh, that I did nice well, that's good we need crazy guys like you <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah. there's another shot of it yeah so that's that as me driving it there um but uh yeah look at those look at those getaway sticks Corey. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see that. the nice little shorts and yeah yeah it's so. just farmer tan yeah, you know so. chicken his chicken legs and that this so is where you were, you were the dock shoes that that make oh, it of yeah. Course. yeah we're, we're boating yeah. right and we're on yeah. the water you have yeah. to wear your dock shoes exactly and this is when he thought man i wish i could have something over my head that was heated and sound protected and everything uh this is where the oxygen helmet was born right here right. it might have <laughs> it, it, it may have started way back then me thinking of the stuff yeah exactly so that's yeah. uh that's actually coming out of a pond uh so we learned we we started the first time we drove the sled was down in the low banks uh, on lake erie and you can imagine lake erie was rough and we didn't have a proper place to to take off and everything and we were out in the in the lake sinking this thing and and uh so uh my boss at the time he he was so in, in uh, you know into this making this happen he actually dug a, a pond on his property that uh, was about a thousand feet long and 30 feet wide so we had a we had a our own water to uh, play on within our own property right beside the shop and that pond yeah, is still sweet. there too yeah yeah it is wicked the uh the the skis look different are they or are they uh like did uh, they weld a bar between the, the spindle and the tip oh well we so we had multiple configurations that's not the the ending up one um that one actually had a a, a spacer uh, underneath the ski leg and then it was a rubber bungee um, because we had the shock and everything removed there was a rubber bungee attached so that the, the ski wouldn't flip down oh i got you that's what that thing is pretty cool yeah and you use one with a full gauge package on it too boy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, there's that's heydays again. That was uh that was last year. So first year back after COVID and and uh, uh, usually heydays. I, I always go out there with my son and uh, he's uh, he's all into the antique stuff himself. So we usually have a good time uh, scrummaging through the uh, through the the swap meet there. So um, I always picking through parts. So you never know what Jacob's going to come home with. Uh, this year he ended up buying a. A 71 340 TNT, which uh, we are now uh, passing that on to Corey so he can show off his talents at our vintage race. So he's he's talking nice. big already, but uh, we'll see how he does. That's cool. I Way wish I was more modest. Hey, was that your first? Humble, but... Was that your first heydays this year, Corey, or have you been to it before? Yeah, no, this was uh, my first. I was supposed to go last year, but with Charlotte's uh, due date being, well, the 23rd, it was kind of risky business for me to to fly down and potentially be a bad dad. <laughs> so um, uh, I vouched to pass last year, and then uh, uh, this year, obviously, uh, I made the trip, which was, uh, I was excited about it for, for weeks because, uh, you know, you, you just hear about it and you see photos of it and, you know, Paul's talked about it and it's just one of those places that if you can, if you can, if you can get over there and, and see it for yourself, it's especially if you're into swap meets and vintage parts and things you don't need. Uh, there's acres of it. Was it like something crazy, Paul, like 30 acres of the whole show and then, or something and then uh, the whole event's over a hundred acres but i don't i don't i don't remember how much i think uh, like the swap meets like 30 or something like it, it's i walked it for an hour and a half and i think i covered a small percentage yeah, yeah i see I think, some drone footage and I, it's unbelievable the size of that area it's amazing yeah it's quite the complex that they've built out there and if you've never gone you got to go if, if, if you're into snowmobiling it's uh, it's something to mark off your bucket list for sure yeah definitely yeah. it's on there I don't know when I can get there. Someone said I should do a snowmobile sessions bus trip out there. You know, on Gary, yes. Yeah, it'd be cool. you, mean, you mean, and then you could camp mean, right out there. You'd have a blast. Yeah, you imagine sixteen hours in a bus with the with the snowmobile sessions crew. <laughs> the way out will be fun. Day. The way home will not be fun. No, that exactly. That that's usually the case, right? So I wish it was closer, you know. But uh, one day I'll get there. Who's this handsome man? Yeah, that's uh, New Orleans at the Superdome, and uh, so on stage at the football field. And that was uh, that was when I introduced my uh, the oxygen helmet project to the dealer network. So uh, it was a it was an exciting exciting event, and we took a long time to develop that that helmet. So I think I was talking 100 miles an hour and all the different features and and everything about that helmet. So it was it was quite exciting and. Obviously, we got a, a great reception from it also. Yeah. yeah. I think I was trying to find some footage that I shot down in London when that the year that the oxygen launched, it was like Skidoo did the one-two punch on everything. They had they had the Gen 4 launch that year. They had the oxygen helmet. They had a line of backcountry snowmobile went on their own line. Um, and it was like going into the the spring tour was like a, like a kid in a candy store. And I think I was talking to you about the oxygen helmet. Like, were you there that, at that show? In, L in London? I, I wasn't, I haven't been to a London show in a while. Yeah, it was London. It was in March and it was, a, it yeah. would have been like March, 2017 or 2018. Yeah. It would have no, been I, 17, I, wasn't that show. I think it was. Okay. Cause there was a, there was someone I was talking to from Skidoo and talking about the oxygen helmet and the heated garage in it and stuff. And, and uh, I was thinking it was you that I was talking to, but I guess not. But the guy was really thorough and and a hoot to chat with. That's for sure. Cool. Nice oh, Formula nice. Plus. Yeah. 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 It's a good looking sled. So that was uh, that's that's way back when I first started. Um, that was the very first dealer meeting that I went to in Tucson, Arizona. So uh, launching all of the. Uh, the 93 stuff that that sled if you look closely at the picture uh, and I was big into grass racing at the time and um, you'll notice it says 620 on the hood 20 yeah yeah 
And, uh, you know, obviously they came out as a 583, but I was sitting there and I was like, guys, this, this doesn't make sense. This, this can't be a six, it, this can't have a 617 in it. Cause that was the year we had the 670. So I said, you can't have the 617 in this, this sled's going to compete with the 670. So, um, they ended up, uh, I don't know if it was something I said, I doubt it, but uh, I was just, a, I think I was 21 at the time, but, uh, uh, anyways, yeah. So that was the, something unique about that sled. It, it didn't come with what it, what it actually said, but, uh, they had all the different sleds on display. We had twin trackers and stuff and, you know, we were just kind of messing around like we were, we were riding them out in the desert there. So it's fun of that. That's sweet. I love the fake snow there, the, the, the cotton candy or whatever. Yeah. Um, and check out, check out how thin the skis are on this thing. It's incredible. Yeah. This is a great little picture. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's, that's myself and my son. So the big guy that you saw a few slides ago, that's, that's him. Uh, and, uh, back in the day, uh, we did everything or as far as my group, we were so small and uh budgets were tight and and i forget what year that was but i think it was 2004 maybe anyways um that was a photo shoot so we didn't have we didn't have uh, enough money to do our own accessory photo shoot um so we took it upon ourselves to do our own so that was up in the in the hills up in J Peak, Vermont, which uh, I was living not too far from there, but we arranged it with a local guy up there, and uh, we did the we did the photo shoot. So not only did we were we making the product, but uh, we were playing model and uh, all of the sleds that were there. We didn't have we didn't have technicians or anything like that back in the at, in Valcour to to do the accessory ones. So I built all the accessory sleds and. So it was, uh, we were kind of, kind of did everything back in the day. That's sweet. Well, you know what? You can do your own modeling because back then they, it, like, uh, even up until now, they tend to hire good looking people with the exception of Corey Jenks. Mm -hmm. I knew that's where that was going. <laughs> I knew it. Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What to, so you, you do a lot of trail riding, but you have some mountain shots here. Um, you, you, you love riding in the mountains a lot or do you not get out there enough? I don't get out there enough. Um, I'd love to go out there more. Uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we, we've been out into Colorado. We used to have a test center on Colorado and, and, uh, one out in BC. And so we get to, we get to go out there, uh, quite a bit, but you, obviously once you've if you've ever tasted a bit of riding in the mountains, then it's like you never get enough. Um, but it's uh, just a awesome, awesome experience to to be able to go out there and ride. And you know, the um, I think the the first time I went out west was Jackson Hole. Um, a friend of mine, Russ Lemke, longtime engine building builder there, he uh, he took me out to Jackson Hole, and I had a I had a 990 Stroker motor in a 120 win inch. Uh, I think I had it in a, uh, one of those, what, uh, I forget all my years here. One of those little SL chassis. Anyways, the big thing was me for me to stretch it to oh, yeah. 137 inches and put an inch and a half track in it. And, uh, you know, when Jackson was happening, that was typically it's, it's springtime, right? So the, the snow was a little harder. So you could, you could go pretty much anywhere, but I remember the first time going out there and thinking, you got to be kidding me. I'm not going up that. And then you slowly pick away and pick away and pick away. And, and, you know, what I look at what that snowmobile did compared to, you know, the summits of today, like it's, it's unbelievable. The, the territory that you can cover up there. It's, it's so much fun. Oh yeah. That's cool. It's still on my list to do. Here we get a spider. Sure. Yeah, Spider F3S in the background. Did you get involved in the Spider Riker lineup of things? Yeah, I was. Uh, I just. I actually gave Spider up. Uh, Spider and the new TNT motorcycle that was just introduced. I, I gave that up to uh, a longtime employee of mine just uh, to to help him with his career and, and and take these projects under his wing. But I, I was with Spider right from the beginning in '98. Um, so. 
um, yeah, did all the accessories, did all the clothing for Spider, and and this was the big year uh, where we did the launch of the of the F3. Uh, this was out in in Quebec. This was a special a special one that we did for uh, the media. We flew the media in with helicopters and. Uh, or and actually it was Lear jets that they all flew in on and then we did uh, a big introduction at hangar and then we took them uh, through a really awesome ride through the through the through the back roads of Quebec so that was a lot of fun nice nice Michael Milner says he wants a spider so bad I got a chance to ride a couple this summer Riker and the f3s um, man what what a what a fun ride I'm telling you I love them yeah, yeah so for me it kudos kind of a... no no go ahead go you you finish that for you it was oh kinda... i was just gonna say that uh for me like even with the f3 and stuff uh i used to put a ton of miles on those like i was putting thirty thousand kilometers on a year and and uh it was kind of like my extension of the of the snowmobile season being able to hop on that and and and, and go out so uh, i don't know if many people know but the first prototype of the spider was actually a rev that they put uh wheels on and uh so that's i'd love yeah. to see that that's awesome yeah well i i actually when i took the riker out i tell uh, the video i have of my test ride was uh i tell that story the first time i ever seen one was was i was i had to take a detour off the highway coming home from the cottage and then barry this this yellow rev comes at me and i'm like the next time I went to the cottage and my neighbor's a snowmobiler and I said, Hey Mark, you know, wouldn't believe what I seen. Somebody took a rev, skew rev and they actually put wheels on it and they're driving it down the street. How cool is that? And then he goes, no, no, it's a can-am thing. And he couldn't remember the name and, and he got his phone out and looked at, looked up the, it was a spider and it was like, Oh man, that's so cool. And then that, that's the first I seen it was like, it was shocking how, how much it looked like a snowmobile on the road. Yeah. Yeah, kind of pretty fun. neat yeah there but it, you know it's not um i think it's it, it it has it's a totally different feel it's not like riding a snowmobile and um, don't expect it to be like that but it's not riding a motorcycle either so it's it's kind yeah. of a cross between the two i think the seating position is is what is different about it than a snowmobile where a rev you're sitting up on it you're actually riding it where the spiders and rikers you're sitting down in it you know um but man, the the corner to corner and the the getting in twisties is a pile of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this is snowmobile sessions, not Riker sessions, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Then we jump into ATV. So. Yeah, that's uh, right. Oops. The oops. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a uh, one of our trips up up at her cottage, and just uh, it's uh, getting a getting a little little stuck there, so. So uh, that's a, that's the one cool thing with the uh, Kearney area is the not only the snowmobile trails but the uh, ATV and side by side trails that the, the Algonquin Club puts on up there is just awesome. So we have a we have a really one good my, time uh, twelve months a year up there. One of my favorite places to ATV is the Algonquin West. It's pretty wild. There's yes. some there's some typical mud holes right there. Yeah, yeah. That's that's almost out by close to pretty close to the park there. But, yeah, uh, sweet. Yeah. yeah, so you see lots shot. of lots of lots of photos of me out west, and I'm usually stuck or in a in a strange position of something I wasn't able to climb. But uh, uh, it's uh, like I said before, just so much fun fun out there and. You get hooked up with someone like a uh, Carl Cooster, and uh, you know he'll uh, he calls it a little Johnny. But there's been times where I, I just got so fl flustered I couldn't I could not get off the mountain. Like I could not. I tried everything possible, and Carl's like, "Oh, just just sit up in front of me, You'd be little Johnny." And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> he goes, "Just sit up front and hold on to the handlebars, and he'll take you for a ride that just it's unbelievable." uh being on a vehicle with him and way, the way he's on the throttle and the way he's on the brake and the finesse and you're you're looking at trees that are you know 50 inches apart and he sends it right through it and dances that thing around it's just it's unbelievable what uh what he can do so 
a lot of fun to go out to his place there and get to experience and, and have him show you different techniques on how to ride. That's cool. Have you ridden a, a turbo in the mountains? Actually, I haven't ridden the turbo in the mountains. No, uh, with COVID and everything that happened there. And, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't get to go out at that time. Yeah. It's uh, I I'd like to try that. It's uh, they say it's pretty awesome. The, the Skidoo 850 turbo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you lose so much. One, you lose so much power. Invites. What was that, Corey? Oh, I'll have to take up one of my open invites from Mercer or uh, Cooster one of these days because it's just, I've I've got to experience it. Uh, you have to take oh, advantage yeah. of it. It's it, it, the, the, the 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 tough part is though is once you go out there and ride, it's like yeah you, you, you can't not go back. You always got to go back. So oh no, so that's when I go back. <laughs> What a, what a tough pr problem to have, right? Oh, there it is, Paul, right there. Yeah, that's the action shot. Is this is this your uh, your uh, your nut buster race, or what do you make yeah. calls? <laughs> this is this is our this is our. So what we do up at our cottage, the, there's there's so many. Uh, we have an awesome group of friends up there, and um, usually every long weekend, you know, someone hosts some type of event through the year. And, uh, so my kind of deal is, is, uh, it's typically the third weekend of March. It's the end of the snowmobile season. And, um, we all get together, uh, as Corey mentioned, uh, under 350 CCs, 1975 or older. And we have a kind of a, a full day of events. So we do everything from oval racing to snow cross, to speed runs, to you name it, we try and do it. And, um, uh, it's, uh, I tell you, as far as, as much as I love the new sleds, that day is probably the most fun day of the year to go and, and participate with everyone and rub some paint and laugh. And, um, it's, it's, it's really cool. Cause everyone too, uh, donates, uh, prizes and gifts. Uh, my work has been awesome donating clothing and oil and stuff. And we, we do different raffles and we have things obviously that the winners can can win and but basically any of the money that we make we we uh we give it all to the uh the uh, the local snowmobile clubs there's two clubs there um rickwards polaris um we do it on uh, on their property and they're, they're just awesome hosts awesome people and it's just a it's just a fun event and i tell you everyone ends up talking about this uh this event here so it's a good time right on i'm looking forward to it but that is also the end of the season so i'm trying to not push that i'm trying to remember it's at the end but i am looking forward to it because win lose you know it doesn't really matter if you're out there even if you're not racing the everyone comes out and wears their their old sled gear and you know and partakes in all the festivities and it, it's uh i'm looking forward to it well, you're going to need That's the time awesome. to work on your your sled, Corey, to get yes. it up into shape yes. to actually be competitive. In. Yeah, I've got to make some time for when I book it on the dyno and stuff. You know, yeah. I want to make sure it's ready. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to rubbing paint with you. Hopefully, you get close enough to me that you'll actually touch some paint. But I doubt it. <laughs> I'd be That's ticking awesome. you off a damn thing. <laughs> 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 you'd be wishing you never sold it to him that's for sure yeah. oh yeah oh, for sure so that's yeah. this is uh this is one of our club meetings uh, so that's uh, elias ishwell so let's see four time champ now three four snowcross champ so awesome kid um and uh sweet uh, that's when he was running for warner back then and we had brought him on and uh, got him all hooked up on our xps program so uh, just fun, another fun, fun time at one of our, our dealer meetings. So we brought him in to, to meet all the dealers. Cause back then he was the, the up and coming guy. So. Right on. Yeah. You guys never, never, uh, cease to, to have the surprises at these events. That's for sure. So yeah, what that's, you, uh, what you... so Blue Ridge mountain, uh, uh so just uh, riding, riding in the trails down into Virginia. So, like I said, a lot of a lot of miles on Spider. Um, just kind of kept my snowmobile season going. 
going 12 months a year. That's neat. Well, the, uh, the t- let's talk about electric. I know you, 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 you kind of hinted at that back, uh, back a few slides ago. Uh, BRP has a, has a, a mandate to have uh, an electric vehicle in each category by what is it? 2026 or, or something like that. Do you think that the, the electric snowmobile will be a snowmobile as we know it today, or will it be more, uh, like an electric offering, it's kind of like what they did with the sea line with the, with the, with the foil board. Um, no, I don't, can't really say for sure, but, uh, you know, I think you'll, I think you'll ultimately see a snowmobile version. Um, but, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see some, some, something in the, in the near future as per, as per the plan that they, they announced, but, uh, yeah, they, they're, they're working hard at electric for sure. Cool. Yeah. I, I just love what they did with the motorcycles. It's, uh, it's amazing. The dual sports, uh, really got my attention. That's for sure. Yeah. The new, uh, the new Can-Am bike that they showed the prototypes for it's, uh, it's a, it's a neat bike. So it's, um, uh, and like you said, I, my favorite is the, uh, is the dual sport also. So, yeah, uh, I think it'd be pretty neat to see what those things can do. Here's a familiar sight. Yeah, behind 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 the bars. So that's kind of like a. Well, I can say that it's it's kind of like a, a some of my office days. So uh, uh, it's not always behind the computer. It's uh, it's sitting in the seat and riding. And um, you know, I'm I, I think I mentioned earlier. I, I probably put on over six thousand kilometers a year, and I I like to te- I test everything we we do. So, um, you know, a lot of my stuff, I'll have ne- next year's accessories on, on a vehicle and, uh, I put it through its paces and, and I'm all over the guys, uh, the Monday morning on something that they sent me that I got in earlier in the week. I make sure I install it myself. So I got to understand what the dealer and the consumer goes through, but, uh, I'm not afraid to put the stuff through the paces and, and comment on it and make sure that, uh, we come up with something really good. Yeah, I hear you got a lot of accessories on there. You've got the flip out mirrors, you've got the oversized hand guards. There's a the, there's a link windshield and and the uh, the cell phone holder too. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was yeah, and probably well, I don't know, maybe not that year. Like I said, a lot of times I'll have I'll have new stuff that isn't released yet and uh, you know, always validating it before we introduce it. <laughs> the comments are on fire. Gary's catching up. I know. I, I, I did comment because Gooley says he's got an old sled that'll be running. It's an old Evinrude. And I said, that won't be run by then. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. That'd be cool, though. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you know Paul, anybody with parts for it. Uh, for the listeners, what the stipulations are again uh, from a machine standpoint? For 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 what's that, Corey? The, the vintage? Nutcracker. Yeah. So 1975 and prior, it has to be a one cylinder. And basically all the one cylinders are under, under 350 cc's. Right. So we have, uh, and basically it's, you try to run them as stock as possible. Um, you know, obviously it's getting tougher with some of the parts not being available and this and that and getting them running, but we have a stock class. We have a mod class too. I've got a full blown mod, but we don't have a lot of guys that uh, have built stuff like that. So I'm kind of waiting for other people to build mod sleds. So, uh, so maybe Corey, after your indoctrination this year, you'll you'll step it up and actually go build a a mod. So if you want to go put a turbo or juice or whatever, you can you can do whatever. Yeah, you want. I'm gonna run That's... nitrous in them. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I better wait for that shot as a timely manner because I think I'm going to get one. Yeah, there you go. The uh, so so is this your cabin here? Yeah, that's that's my cottage there and uh, beautiful spot. My, uh, my uh, was so that was two years ago, um, and then uh, you know with my two other two other sleds sitting there, my my riding buddies that uh, we've ridden together pretty much the last 20 years together. So, uh, 
So always a good time up there for sure. And look at the snow. It makes me it makes me long for those days, right? Here's the TNT starting to climb up the wall. Yeah, it's, uh, it wanted it saw snow. It smelt the snow and wanted to get out out for a ride, but uh, <laughs> that's as far as it got. Do you, do you take it outside at all, or is it is it totally a a, a living room queen? Uh, well, I'd say it's a it's it's going to stay a living room queen. It, it can run like it's all there. It's just need to put gas in it, but um, I don't really have a desire to drive it. It's. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's too I've cool. got my old I've got my old one lunger thing that we do once a year and after you ride it one of those old things for uh, that one day a year you need the rest of the year to recuperate so it's like it's too pretty it's a it's a it's a nice uh, piece of furniture and it's going to stay a piece of furniture yeah that's right and here we get we got some work in progress in your shop here yeah, no, it just it's kind of like, uh, and it's going to be starting soon. As soon as the new sled comes in, so it ends up in the shop, and the first thing I do is usually strip them all apart and start changing stuff, or you know, making it the way I want it to be, and changing things from a calibration point of view and things like that. So uh, I like, I like, uh, I've always liked getting getting totally involved in in uh, you know how my sled set up and the stuff that I put on it. So it's. Uh, bit of enjoyment there yeah that's the way that's the way my shop looks too only only i don't have a stove in it so i just freeze my fingers off while i'm working on it it's almost like punishment <laughs> yeah literally why i put that stove in there because it's like i just won't do it like it, i hate cold wrenches and all that stuff unless you have to like you literally just broke something in the yard and you and your buddies are dragging this old heap into the garage and changing whatever in a matter of 10 minutes then you just kind of give her but if it's like the actual work evening uh, i prefer it to be warm that's for sure oh absolutely yep I, I got a question for you paul you might know the answer to it is is it true that with the uh, smart shocks to remove the if you remove your rear skid you have to use buds to actually recalibrate it when you install it or is there a way to remove the skid and replace the skid without without needing buds uh well i i removed mine um i removed mine last year and i didn't have to uh do anything with buds um that's that's good to know then that's yeah. great yeah. yeah i just heard somebody had said that to me and and i was thinking i i never heard that before um and i and i hope it's not true so i'm glad it's not true no, there. That's good. You know, there might there might be something like I know that you can pull the you can pull the skid out, but there is something, there is something with the um, and I forget all the terminology that they're using as far as those uh, position sensors that they have on their rear arm and stuff. If you go when you start playing around and twisting that around, um, when you take it out, yes, then you're going to have to reset things. But you can basically pull the skid out and uh you know disconnect the wiring and, and things like that and not have to plug it into buds oh okay yeah as long as you don't touch the servos or whatever is yeah. on there right yeah, yeah exactly that's cool is that your license plate well it is and it isn't it was given to me uh i didn't i wasn't the first guy who got this but uh i think you had him on as a guest before that but that uh, belongs to my old buddy steve brand from tech vest yes right on and, yeah, so Steve, yep. originally when, uh, way back in the day, um, the uh, when Ontario went to personalized license plate, Steve ran to the uh, to the DMV there, and uh, he was first in line, so he got that as a plate, and um, Steve, uh, alongside of TechFest, he's all, also a real estate agent and longtime friend of mine, and uh, anyways, when he... he he was my agent when I bought my cottage up there and uh, uh, he had gotten new plates. And uh, anyways, that was, that was part of my, his gift to me for uh, getting the cottage up there. So that hangs proudly on the wall. That's awesome. Young lad. Yeah, that's uh, so. Yeah, so that's kind of. I joke with people. This is Corey I was born James. on. Yeah, I was born on a snowmobile, so it's uh, 
I think that was like a 1971 uh, Rupp. That was my dad's and uh, me sitting on the hood of it. I'm going to say how long ago. Are you sure that's not a painting? Was there cameras? Was there... No, it wasn't a painting. <laughs> was there cameras? <laughs> Yeah, well, I I think a lot of our viewers wouldn't know what a rup was, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. well, they they had some cool sleds back in the day. Oh, for uh, sure. And that that's that's going back. That's when we first started testing our water sled. Uh, so we were out in the yeah, out on Lake great. Erie. Yeah. Do you do you do a lot of heavy mods now with your with your snowmobiles, or do you like leaving them stock? I used to. I used to do everything. I was bad. I used to carry a 55-gallon drum of race fuel in the back of my truck going up north and, you know, super compression and pipes and porting and you name it. And uh, nowadays, I like to, I still like to play with the clutch. Um, I have, uh, I have uh, been using uh, uh, Greg's pipe, which I really like, but that's, uh, that's really the extent of it. It's it's more fine tuning, calibration, suspension, chassis setup stuff that uh, that I like to do, but not 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 the silly stuff I did in the past. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you know what? They they are pretty good stock, aren't they? Oh, they're unbelievable now. It's just and I don't know. It's I I like to put miles on, and I like I like the the feeling of just go wherever and reliability and. And uh, so I've I've done my share of messing around with with them and and had a lot of fun doing it. I learned a lot for sure, but uh, just to just the peace of mind to to go out there and the calibration and everything on how the whole sled works nowadays is so much better than than what we had in the past. So uh, I just pretty much leave them alone. Yeah, you get to Absolutely. the point where you just want to put a fuel in them and bring some oil and get going, right? You know, exactly, to... exactly. I, I'm I'm that way too. It's reliability over everything. I'll touch the clutch on the newer ones, but I won't uh, I won't do anything else. That's that's crazy and gonna limit the reliability of it. You know, that's yeah. the worst thing you could you could ask for. Yeah, it was just another shot of the oxygen helmet. Yeah, and and you got quite a bit of quite a few different options for colorways as well. Yeah, it's uh, it's evolved quite a bit. Uh, I don't even know all the latest uh, the latest ones, but you know we we pretty well cover the spectrum of colors when it comes to uh, that helmet nowadays. Yeah, anything to match your sled, custom tailor it to the machine. Yeah, you just give them the thumbs up. Look at the look at the snow in the trees too. I can't wait for those days. Yeah. Yeah, I don't even remember where I was here, but um, anyways, I was having a good time, that's for sure. And this doesn't look like you're having a good time in this shot. Well, you know what, I, I <laughs> this, this picture is deceiving because I kind of jumped in there for the photo op because it was uh, it was buried and it was under a tree and uh, it was my uh, it was actually my good buddy Mark Warner that. Uh, that drove the sled under that tree, but we were all there to pitch in to help get him out. But uh, I couldn't resist the shot. But ever since I did take the shot, of course, um, everyone thinks it's me. So I, I, it's okay, it's me, and we were having a good time. So yeah, yeah. Well, your your gear matches the free ride green. Well, exactly. Right? I was just going to say it a, was also it was a perfect matching uh, color combination there of the jacket to the graphics. So. That was good. You were for sure. <laughs> That's probably the issue. Is that a but, summit or a free ride? Uh, that was a summit. Yeah, nice. Nice. But uh, the pictures don't do it justice out there. Like, it's it's unbelievable. Like, you know, you don't really understand the predicament that you're actually in and how steep it is, uh, you know, based on the picture. But uh, uh, he got a little too close to the tree and, the, uh, you know, the snow gave way and it just sucked him right in. So, but all part of the experience of going out there. Yeah, that's neat. Well, that's the thing. I, I heard that when you get stuck, it's just as fun, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, especially if you've got it, people not... that can help get you out. <laughs> yeah. I guess it's more fun when your buddy gets stuck, though, than, than when you get stuck. Yeah, not for sure. 
Yeah. Do you so, do you have uh, do you have vintage uh, uh, dirt bikes? Like this is an old Can Am. Is it an MX one twenty five or what were they called back then? That was a TNT. So it had the uh, turn signals TNT. and the tail light on it. But yeah, uh, it's a nineteen seventy five. Oh, nice. TNT. Um, I think yeah, I have so a different graphic on the tank on that. And you still own that one. today? Yeah. Yeah, I've got that. I've got three of those bikes, and uh, the other two are sitting in the trailer. Uh, slowly piecing them together so over the years i continue to collect parts and there's some really oddball parts like the turn signals and stuff the taillights are really hard to find um, but uh yeah i enjoy just kind of playing around and putting them together and that one i had at the cottage for years so uh i it's all plated and everything so i'd ride it in the town or ride it over to friends places and or do the milk run with it so but neat neat old bike. is it as rang as is it as rangy as the as the motocross version of the two fifties, or did they tune it down a bit? I think I think that's a good question. I think the motor was the same. Um, you know, that one's only a little one twenty five, but I think the motor was pretty yeah. much the same. Um, but I never had an MX version, so I don't I don't know. But the frame yeah, and everything is, is is for sure all the same. Yeah, they're hard. To, they're hard to find. I almost had one. The guy decided not to sell it a year ago, and it's like, ah. but it wasn't the enduro. It was the MX version of the same bike, right? Yeah. But uh, yeah, like you said, it was missing a few things, like the side panels. And I, I tried to find some in the meantime, thinking I was getting my hands on it, and and I couldn't find them. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, again, just another another one of our vintage uh, races. And, uh, just a, like I said, a good old good old time out there. It's uh, lots of laughs. Yeah, that's some, of, some of us take it a little more serious than others. So uh, is that right? Yeah. I, is this on a lake that we're looking at right now, or is it in a field? That one's in a field. That one's yeah. in a field, but it gets. Uh, you never know at that time of year; it can get pretty soupy. So, yeah, because uh, it's slush, a lot of water coming up there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Robin, a good time every, of year to do it. Every one of those 21 horsepower that you have. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a good time of year to do it too because it's warm enough to ride with lighter gear on as well, right? Well. Uh oh. Yeah, we lost him again. Yeah. My back. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. One of these wicked triples. Oh yeah, the triple. So that was a that was that was the last custom sled that I built. So when I was in my heyday of say building funky stuff, that was a that was a Lemke, a Russ Lemke 990 Stroker triple, and uh, it was an XP platform, a Renegade XP, and then I put the four stroke body work around it to uh, to make it all fit. But that was a Pretty close to a 200 horse, three cylinder, trail trail sled. So it right worked on. really really good. Yeah, I can't believe you fit those pipes under the hood. Wow. Well, it was. He built me. That was. It took three three attempts. He kept getting over to the third pipe and then ran out of room. And I remember him calling me saying that uh, this week is my. Uh, this is the last chance to for this to work. And if it doesn't work, you're throwing this thing in the trash. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he, he called me about a, a couple of days later. So come pick up the, come pick up your sled. So, but, uh, it was, it was a trick sled. Uh, it's, uh, I sold it to uh, a friend of mine and with the intent that if I ever want it back, hopefully I can get it back. But it's, uh, it was, it was really cool. It was, what was neat about it too, is because you haven't, you know, being a triple and just the sound of the triple and you'd go pull into the gas station with it. Yeah. It would turn everyone's head, but, uh, yeah, that was, that, that was a really cool sled. Oh, I bet. And that's the thing is they sound good stock. I can't imagine having a triple pipes on it. Uh, what that thing would sound like. Yeah. Must be yeah like the a triple pipes car. and. We had a modified stock canister, so it had the big the big suitcase on it, but it was modified a bit, so it had a really nice sound to it. But it wasn't it wasn't obnoxious or anything. So, um, right. Uh, but uh, it uh, it turned heads when it came by. That's for sure. Oh, neat! Love it. 
it's a, you'd want to put a clear hood on that so you can see the pipes too. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, this is a good group you've got here. Yeah, I forget what mountain that was on, but that was in August up uh, just outside of Whistler, and um, that's uh, we we had just developed the Apache um, uh, track kit. And the Apache yep. had a lot of advantages over the competition. That's you know the track kit for the ATVs. So a uh, girl that worked for me, she came up with the idea of uh, uh, being able to go on top of a glacier while we were out there at a dealer meeting. And we took a select group of dealers from all over the world. And uh, we went up on this glacier. We set up a course. We had all the competitive models. We had bathrooms up there. We had food. Uh, entertainment and, and basically uh, we had them compare and drive these things around in August on top of a, a glacier and we flew everyone in on a helicopter and it was just it was just one of those super cool events that uh, oh, you know, cool. my first time in a helicopter and, and then after the event the, the guy goes Do you want to go for a real ride and we're like yeah and so he took us through all the like what you'd see in the movies type things as far as going through these valleys and then up up and down through the rockies and it was just a, it was a blast so we had a really good time that's cool what a what an opportunity man to test the test the metal out eh yeah Is this, uh, this is a Mach 1, the original. Yeah, that was our, so a friend, couple friends and I, we were all kind of partners and we were big into drag racing back in the day. And yeah, that was our, our 92 uh, Mach 1X. And, uh, um, you know, drag racing, we went all over heydays and New York State, Ohio, New York, all through Southern Ontario. And that was a, that was, that sled there was the, pretty well the the dominant sled back in the day in the in the uh, pro stock class that's sweet i love those sleds man and, and you don't see any of them around anymore yeah they're, they're getting harder it's to find sh- it's a shame you know there's there's a rv pulling the skis yeah the blizzard uh that was that's a, a blizzard that's, right yeah, yeah. 95 that was a 9500 and that was at new york state back in cold new york and uh again it was a it was a fun dealership to work at at the time we got to we got to ride all the product and they were big into racing and uh, so i was pretty young back then and they i was pretty tiny at the time too so they said hey you, you you're good on the trigger you can drive this thing so it was we had a lot of good times that's sweet and that's it that's awesome. I was gonna say, wow, that's a nice photo, Paul. That's really nice back uh, forest. But. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> my background. <laughs> that's in my backyard here right now. Yeah, so that was good. So thanks for sharing your uh, your stories with us. That's pretty cool. If anyone in the chat has any questions for Paul or 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 uh, Corey, then fire them away, and and away we go. We had Mark Bro showing up late, and the uh, you know, the dominator giving the gears at the show starts at seven, you know, well, seven to seven fifteen, we'll say, you know, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and Corey, you're at the snowmobile show. I see you, you posted that in the comments. Are you there Friday and Saturday? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'll be at the Skidoo booth, uh, with, uh, uh the rest of the team. Uh, there'll be from an ambassador standpoint. Um, uh, I think there's actually going to be only be a couple of us, but, there obviously they send uh, a lot of PR team and stuff down. So come check it out. I, I haven't been in actually quite a few years because obviously with COVID and uh, and being just ultimately busy and stuff, it's been a few years. So I'm looking forward to uh, uh, being there and, and seeing people, local people again. So come say hi and we can shoot the breeze. Yeah, that's cool. And in two weeks, I'm going to have Richard from o- OSM Mag on and he's going to talk about the show and, and get us all geared up for it because it'll be the following weekend. So next next Monday night's Thanksgiving. So I, I won't be doing a broadcast then, but the week following, tune in for uh, for Richard and talking about the Toronto International ATV and Power Sports and Snowmobile Show. And uh, it'll be fun. I'm going to be down there on the Saturday with, uh, with Energy Power Sports. I'll be doing some lives and hopefully walking around if I can get the technology worked out. And uh, and we'll... Uh, 
we'll get her done. Technology. Well, we always both struggle with both those things. So. Yeah, for sure. I have big, I have big ideas, but sometimes the technology won't keep up with them. That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, Paul, yeah, we'll thank come you. Say for hi, or I'll come visit you one way. I or will other. for sure. Absolutely, I'll sneak a couple of barmy blondes in for us, and you know, <laughs> we can have a bevy or two. But don't yes. tell Richard that when he's on. All right. So, but uh, yeah, thanks for joining us, Paul. Thanks for lining that up, Corey. That was a great show. Um, Dominator says, Paul, will could you ever bring back the one core oil caddy for the newer gen platforms? The one on, under the hood. We're running out of room. That's the biggest problem. Um, I'm just trying to think we are, we are working on something and I think, uh, I think it has the, it might have the ability to hold a, a quart of oil, but, uh, it might only be on the summit. That's the problem. It's a goggle bag. Okay. But, yeah. We'll, we'll keep an eye out for that. Any that other innovations that lighter you can... and skinnier, right? So yeah. 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 Room is a any other the... innovations you can, you can let out of the bag while you're on the show. <laughs> so, you know what, to be honest, I get, I got to watch what I say. Cause I get mixed up what year I'm in. So, um, but, uh, no, I just, Hey, we're, we're, we're not stopping as far as innovative ideas. We've got, uh, it's so cool. I was actually in Valcor, um, a week ago when, um, meeting with all the guys there. And it's strange because when I used to go up there, I knew everyone. And now when I go up there and I'm looking around, it's like, God, I don't know. I don't know a soul, but we've got, uh, we've got a lot of, a lot of really neat younger engineers and designers and, um, it's it's so cool working with these guys they they're so creative and you just give them a, a little bit of an idea and a direction and they jump all over it and what they can do on the cads and everything now it's like by the end of the day they're showing you a prototype of what what we just discussed earlier and it's like oh my god you know so it's it's a lot of fun and uh just uh yeah just uh you'll you'll see a lot more cool stuff coming no no worries there that's neat. I've seen pictures of the innovation center in, in, uh, Valcourt and it's, it's neat. Some of the stuff hanging on the wall and, and, uh, the stuff that they've played around with and, and are maybe even still in development. It's, uh, it's nice to see it. Wasn't there an airplane or something hanging up there like a, uh, on the, on the, like the, in the museum. Oh, in the museum, Showing in the museum, heart. there's an airplane. Uh, yeah. The museum yeah. has an airplane, but that was probably a, uh, either Canada Air or Learjet or something that they they owned uh, where they had that. Yeah. But yeah, the the DNI Center is a it's a it's a pretty not many people get to go in there, but if you do, it's 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 a pretty awesome thing to see. And obviously, the people there, it's so cool the just the mindset and everything that happens there to to make the things that uh, you end up seeing as a consumer. It's a, it's a cool process. Yeah, cool. I got to go, Gary, uh, last year. Yeah, well, uh, we did. Uh, it, I basically had to sign my life away. Um, ultimately, I didn't really see anything <laughs> that um, they make sure you don't. But it's like a movie. You're walking through and you see a couple dudes with some lab coats and they walk through a door that says employees only. And then you just kind of like looking around and <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I heard they make the you put your phones away and stuff and yeah, it's uh, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. Well, even yeah. the factory yeah. itself is super, super high tech. I, I, I mean, I think, uh, I wish everyone could see what, cause it is a little bit pri proprietary in terms of well, how that all, all is done, but man, it, it is, it is next level, uh, in terms of, it's like an auto manufacturer in term, you know, a high end one, like all the automated stuff that's happening. You know, I, I have seen photos and videos of our competitors, uh, dungeons of, of factories <laughs> look like someone's basement. So, uh, it, it is cool to see that they're operating at that level of, of manufacturing. Yeah. It's, uh, nice. it's next level for nice. sure. It's, uh, it's, it's out there as far as uh, how the, the overall setup that they have for assembly. Yeah. Uh, Wisco Sledheads wants to know if Skidoo is doing any blue accessories for the Gen 5, like skid plates, etc. cetera. Uh, not this year, I think. Possibly next year. I, uh, I think we have some blue, but uh, like I said, I don't... Uh, 
you don't know what year you're in. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't even know what year. Today's in. Monday, Paul. We'll start there. I know there. it's Monday, but uh, that's right. <laughs> like I said, I know there's more color options coming. That's for sure. I love it. Oh, the, I mean, like you're saying, it's so it's such an innovative company, and they they lead the they lead the industry on accessories. And congratulations for being part of that. And and just the few that we showed tonight. I mean, it's you pick up the catalog and and you can see the clothing accessories of parts and and every every year i get surprised about something like sled 519 had the adventure bumper on his gen 4 last year and i was like that is such a cool bumper and i you immediately think it's aftermarket and it's got the skidoo brand on it and i got to get that bumper you know so it's uh, it's pretty cool Renegade X says, great show, guys. Thanks, Paul, Jinxie, and Gary. Anyone going to the grass drags in Moorfield on the 15th? Are you going to the grass drags there, Jinxie? No, I, I'm. that weekend is tied up. It's uh, I'm pushing into winter right now with work. So uh, working on Saturdays and things like that are the nature of the beast at the moment. Yeah, no, that's cool. Well, we've been talking about going, so I... We, we might end up there we'll see what happens so but uh and so anyway uh as far as uh paul goes uh if people want to stay in touch with uh with your developments do they just follow skidoo page skidoo on on instagram that kind of thing or or what do you suggest well you know whether it's on facebook or instagram the skidoo page you know usually anything new that we're releasing is always always on there so um that's that's probably the the best spot. Obviously, uh, was it later in February, third week of February, I believe, is uh, the next next year product launch um, for all the new models of snowmobiles and, and accessories. So that'll be the the next big date as far as uh, new products that'll be introduced. Right exciting. On. Well, we'll keep an eye out for that. Yep. Well, I, I'm going to end the show now. If you want to stick around after the credits roll. Um, but, uh, thanks again, Corey Jinx. Uh, thanks again, Paul. It was a great show. Um, and when I, I knew when I seen the pictures and heard who was going to be on, I, I got really excited about it. So, and you didn't disappoint. Cool. Well, it was a lot of fun being here. So really enjoyed it. Yep. Thank great you. On. Appreciate it. No problem. I'll roll the credits then. Uh, and if you're watching this after the fact, there's two great videos. I think you'll, you'll want to click on, uh, right coming up. Thanks, guys, and uh, we'll see you in two Mondays from now. It's a journey.